Hello everyone and welcome to Aneurysm episode uh, 27 maybe, not sure, just look at the description in your app, I never remember what number we're at, uh, just one thing before we begin, top text! Now that we got that out of the way, uh, today we are interviewing a great Tumblr blog that I've been following for years called Photo Fryer, also known as MSEC. And uh, they are, amongst other things, credited, at least on Neuer Meme, with uh, creating the E meme. You know, the deep fried E meme with Markiplier morphed as a uh, Shrek Prince guy? Load so. Yes, so yes, that's, me. Uh, that's you. Great. <laughs> so in, introduce yourself, please. I'm All right. Um, I go by Cyan on the Internet. Um, I've been making memes for about, uh, I'd say, uh, six or so years. And uh, yes, I did uh, create the e-beam that was through the MSEC blog. Um, nice. That was probably that's probably my biggest cultural impact in the world, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's um, <laughs> I, it was honestly an accident. It's incredible that that thing, um, ever became popular. <laughs> it was yeah, a total but, throwaway. Um, honestly, yeah. I could tell you about the story if you want. It's pretty interesting. Oh yeah. So yeah, excellent. Um, so it started on my Discord, which um has a bunch of people there who like to participate in memes. They usually just submit stuff. I usually like post it or I don't post it. Um, that's where I met a bunch of the people that I call friends and some of the admins that um, run the blog today. Uh, I met through there. So one of the people who um, submitted one of the memes, they gave me that picture of Lord Farquaad with the E on it. <laughs> and I credit them with the start of the meme, but I fried it myself like I just edited it. And then I posted okay. it onto the blog and it got no attention at all. And it shouldn't have because it wasn't there wasn't any content within <laughs> the meme itself. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But someone must have found it and then put it in their own meme. And it just became an example of um, post post modernist uh, humor, I guess. Yeah, I can totally see like a Washington Post article. Like, why is millennial humor so weird with the E? Mm. picture right in the middle yeah it's incredible that that became the poster child i'm honored that i'm the one that started it but you know it's um uh pretty yeah. stupid so apparently <laughs> yeah. yeah it's one of yeah. my favorite parts of it to be honest mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it's it, and it's a miracle that it ever um got created in the first place i almost didn't post it i just did it because it was a slow week Damn. yeah yeah <laughs> almost yeah, didn't yeah. exist I, I think it I think it was a uh, kind of an era. Uh, it was around 2017, 2018, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the era of meme that kind of started surprisingly out of nowhere. I remember especially a meme from this period uh, that was uh, that boy. Oh, shit. What up with a frog on a unicycle? Yeah, that also yeah. that also came from nowhere and shouldn't technically have gone viral but it did and i'm, I'm glad it did um but yeah the e is is really one of these and um yeah the only other viral meme i can think uh that came from your uh blog is the uh i only drink molten plastic dumthoticus yes yes uh, that one i'm a little bit more it, proud of just a just a <laughs> hair because at least it, there's like a joke in there you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it a lot on Tumblr, not too much outside, a few times on Reddit. Uh, but uh, the E is like ubiquitous. I've seen it like so. In, I've seen it on like music channels, like YouTube music YouTubers, like Adam Neely uh, made references to the E meme when he talked about some kind of scale or jazz thing. Ooh, really? And uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I, I've, I've seen it on some. Awesome. I. I, I, I know almost... PewDiePie like put it in a video like once or twice. Oh wow! Yeah, he yeah, puts so the original yeah. image in there. That's my huh. that's my impact on the world. It's, nice, yeah, really as, nice. As five seconds in one. That must have been video. surreal. It was. It yeah. was insane. Really, I yes. couldn't believe it when I first started. I because I followed the dank meme subreddit back then, and mm -hmm. I, I once in a while I posted stuff in there, but only like like really good like posts that already performed well on Tumblr where I posted mm -hmm. all of my memes, I posted on Reddit and I browsed through there. And when I started seeing that E meme, I thought that the person who gave me the E meme at first was like ripping that off like a month early. Mm -hmm. 
But no, I accidentally started it. I had no idea. <laughs> I it took me a month to find out that I had started something like that, and now I can't escape it. <laughs> that's yeah, that's great. That's one of these stories. Mm -hmm. Probably like the damn Daniel it was the same thing at oh, the yeah. same time. So um, yeah, so let's. Uh, I think it would have been worse to be damn Daniel, though, honestly. Because you have your, because I don't have my face attached to it. Like in real life, I don't have to be known as that. But damn Daniel, he's cursed forever. But it, I, I'm really just, yeah, 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 sure. it's such a huge and, honor uh, to have something like to have something that I made be such a big part of internet culture. It's a real honor. Yes, I, I'm only joking mm. with all this. I, I would attribute like its effect, the the memes effect to like the pattern searching part of our brain. I remember when I first saw it, I just I just couldn't actually think of like what what spawned it. It was like such a an anomaly when I saw it that I, I ended up showing a bunch of my friends just to see like if they could even process it. Yeah, it's hard um, to it's it wasn't an easy thing to understand. It wasn't an easy friend to understand. Like <laughs> I couldn't understand it myself. It, it took me a while to even. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's truly. I think it's almost a turning point in the meme culture, at least a part of it where things just started getting, yeah, I feel that. where it just started getting so esoteric and, uh, random just for the sake of it, where inside jokes don't really yeah. have like a beginning to them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really. <laughs> when, I, when I saw it first, I, I, I remember, I thought it was like randomly generated by a robot or some kind of algorithm. <laughs> yeah. It might as well have been, uh, I, sure. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure the yeah. uh, whoever picked it picked it up like a robot. I I don't know what they saw in it. I don't. I'll, I'll be honest. I only put it on my <laughs> blog. I have no idea who picked it up and then made the second meme out of it. I don't know who did that, but they must have gotten more traction because it wasn't me. But that's incredible, and it's it's one of the it's probably the best thing that's come out of that blog. You know. Uh -huh. I noticed that the kind of nickname of the blog was MSEC. Uh, for the people who are listening who don't know, uh, MSEC uh, was one of the first songs uh, by French techno musician Mr. Oiseau uh, before he was famous, before Flat Beats. It was like one of these first singles. So uh, I, I wonder if that's uh, like a reference. Are you a big fan or is it a name that you um, chose at random? Well, it's a bit of both because I happen to be a huge, giant fan of Mr. Wazo's music. It's okay. it's sort of obscure. Um, I'm pretty much the only American I've ever met that's ever heard of this artist. But uh, <laughs> MSEC is um, honestly a terrible song. I don't really like it. I was. It's just one of the things I listened to while going through that artist's discography, and it's a name that really just stuck out. And yeah, I see. When I started the blog, I used to. Um, one of the things that I took from my old tactics of making memes on Instagram back when I was like a kid, like literally in yeah. elementary school, is that if you want people to not steal your memes, you like um, watermark them by putting your like at or name. Yes. I decided to watermark all of um, my early uh, memes on the blog with MSEC just because it was short and you could hide it pretty easily. So it didn't mm -hmm. like um, interrupt the photo. And that just stuck. It just stuck with me. Is that the song where the um, the music video is like the the guy washes his car and there's like a little puppet? In yes, the, that's the, in the that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that puppet's oh, name uh, is uh, Flat Eric. I think it's the first appearance yeah. of that puppet ever. Yeah, it's like a prototype. It's not definitive Flat Eric. It's but you can see it's uh, probably a prototype. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's okay. like the first appearance of it, and it would later go on to be in Flat Beat. I don't I don't know how popular that song is in France and in Europe because I I know it was bigger there but in America there's really no there was no lasting presence for um the flat beat but I know that it made an impact in the commercials in like the late 90s or something real obscure yes, stuff Yes uh it wasn't it wasn't that huge the song at the moment uh but it got featured in uh Levis ad the Vis jeans Yeah and uh that that had a quite of an impact yes Yeah I I read um, a couple of articles about its impact and like 
even like the United Kingdom and stuff. Uh, it, it's crazy. Yeah, it was a it was a time where a lot of. Um, relatively obscure musicians uh, from France got into a lot of ads. I remember uh, almost at the same time there were Daft Punk who were in like, uh, I don't remember what ads, the like Gucci or Hugo Boss or something. I, guess. I think something like uh, that. Daft Punk is like probably my favorite band of all time, honestly. Nice. I'm really into French music. I don't know how that started, but it's where I am now, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's where I take a lot of influence. I, that's why I started to... Um, uh, use msec as sort of a signifier to call back on that you know mr mr wazoo is he's also a movie director isn't he yes he did yes, that, yeah i was gonna bring that up yeah did, have you seen any of his movies i've seen yeah i've seen rubber yeah oh yeah i've right. seen rubber too that's probably the best one yeah well it's definitely the most I uh quite like that popular on the internet just because of its absurdity yeah. That's probably my first exposure to the artist because there was that image on Instagram that cycled around where it was just telling people that there's a movie where the tire kills people. That was my mm -hmm. first exposure yeah. to that artist without even knowing it. <laughs> Did it have an, an influence on your meme creation? I, I think a little bit. Um, at, definitely at the beginning more than when the blog started to evolve and I started to find the humor. That's when... But a lot of like... The first couple of memes are sort of based around um, not just sort of random events or jokes that I thought of, but sort of about memes about the music I liked. So there's a lot. I think there's a couple of posts about Daft Punk and uh, Justice, another band from France that's mm -hmm. still one of my favorites today, and from uh, Mr. Wazo. But um, as I started getting more popular, I start I strayed away from those sort of esoteric sorts of like uh, things that I found funny and more things that would be popular with more people. Yeah, yeah. too much nuance can like sort of alienate an audience. Yes, it's a balance that I uh, tried to strike, and I I think I did every uh, a couple of different times with some of the more popular posts on my blog. But it took a while to get there. Uh, when did you start dabbling in like memes and shit posting? Was it like always your thing, or did it start at some specific point? I think, um, I guess it all started probably back when I was a kid. When I first got a hold of like an iPod and Instagram, I started just reposting memes onto a meme account, and then I just kept doing that for uh, a couple years on Instagram. That got like a couple thousand, which was huge for a kid that was ten years old. You know, yeah. and then that, yeah, wow. th but then I sort of strayed away from that. Eventually, I just sort of got tired of um, that sort of thing when I entered uh, probably like middle school or something. But um, a lot of that experience that I gained that young really helped um, uh, learn what would get popular and what wouldn't on a Tumblr when I eventually went there. I think that blog started mm -hmm. late 2014, like December, Christmas time, I want to say. Maybe 2015. Yeah, okay. I, I can't remember. And then from yeah, there, I, I just uh, I just kept making memes uh, ever since. Hmm. Tumblr was also mm -hmm. the the definitive um, site that uh, really uh, put me into the meme and shit posting, um, you know, movement. I would say I, I already was, uh, you know, I already knew stuff like uh, I, I saw early stuff like on before social media. We had just like these forums and message boards. And then it was like MySpace and, of course, 4chan. But, um, yeah, there's a thing about how memes are shared on Tumblr that makes it... I, don't, I wouldn't even... Know it's a how very explain, different but... culture than other websites. Like Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with Instagram, you like... If you want to make memes like and build a brand from it, it's really difficult because you have to rely on people like coming to you specifically. Because usually people yes. will just screenshot and screen record whatever things you make and just repost it on their accounts. So it's a yeah. lot more like uh, diversified and it doesn't harbor a lot of um, room for original posting like Tumblr does. Because there you can build like I, I almost built a brand on Tumblr, essentially, just because of the way reblogs work. It's a different culture. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting how the user interface and user experience of sites can really shape uh, the, the culture based on how it works and how we share things. Yet, there are some sites that have cultures that are kind of similar to each other, especially like, for example, 4chan and Tumblr have a lot of similar feel, at least in my opinion. It is There's similar as far as meme culture is, which is surprising considering how different they are like otherwise. Yes. 
Absolutely, yes. But yeah, the, the meme and shit posting uh, culture on 4chan and Tumblr is surprisingly similar. Then there's like Instagram and Reddit, which have also completely different ways to uh, function, but also have a quite similar uh, meme culture. And then there's Facebook, where you have everything. Do, do you have a meme page on Facebook or are you only on Tumblr? I'm really, I really only ever was on Tumblr and a little bit on Instagram. I think there might be a Facebook page, but if it exists still, I never really posted on it. So it's going to be blank if you look it up. But I know that yeah. the Facebook meme scene is very interesting. It's almost like Instagram, but um, uh, a lot more community based. Oh yes, yeah. That's that's the great thing about Facebook. It's like the, there is no other site that has community interactions and community building as good as Facebook. It's really ahead of the game in that specific um, aspect. And also, there is a huge diversity in the in the cultures. Uh, there's not really a defined uh, Facebook meme culture because this, there's like so many people on Facebook that you see every kind of stuff every day from the most mm. edgy stuff to the most wholesome stuff to like boomer cringe to uh, post yeah. postmodern uh, kid stuff there's everything on Facebook yeah it's well, a lot I, more open to sort of a niche meme market in a way that I would say something like reddit isn't because reddit yeah the way reddit um, works is that it encourages pretty much the most uh, agreed upon and generic sorts of uh, mm. content within each subreddit and Facebook yeah. isn't really like that. So it has it, it, Reddit tends to be more like um, generally uh, crowd pleasing content. And uh, Facebook happens to be more Facebook and Instagram. And I guess Tumblr, too, happens to be more like uh, diversified. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, on, on Reddit, there, there's something that is kind of an issue uh, for the health of the, you know, content. And that is the, the structure of subreddits, because often you, there's a subreddit that's being created and then people will take a, a really specific thing, a really specific meme and then and then like milk it so much that it's going to be like dead uh, very fast and and then the thing is like it won't come back again um yeah a lot uh, of jokes like a lot of tumblr jokes happen to end up being more classical when they uh, after yeah. a while away from them when they first start being a thing like after a meme dies on tumblr it can usually come back and be referenced again in the future in a way that reddit oh, yeah. memes can't because reddit always yes. drives their memes into the ground no matter what very true yes exactly i mean the the biggest tumblr meme i can think of that really started on uh, on tumblr uh is doge and it has been going strong for seven years now almost uh eight and it was voted like meme of the decade on a lot of uh, sites and magazines uh, dedicated more or less to internet. And like it's for me, Doge is like the the epitome of a Tumblr meme. It started like it's just this picture of a dog from some blog in Japan, and then it mm. was like people started slapping uh, funny text on it and. It never mm -hmm. died. It never died. It's still going strong today. I would say uh, that it and, probably did die for a little while. There was definitely a two-year period where, like, Doge memes were pretty bad. But then there oh, was, yeah, like, true. a revival, yeah, it, it, like, a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah it had to evolve. Mm -hmm. And it evolved yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad it, where it is now. Yeah. It's, it's great. Oh, yeah. I love Doge yeah, memes. It's and really it's good. split off with um, Chames now as well. Yeah. Sort mm. of. That's what it needed. I would say it, that's just, it's directly related. Yeah, that's. I'm, I'm glad it is where it is now. I can't imagine if people were still referring to Doge memes in that sort of like "Wow, so funny" sort of format with the Comic Sans. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah of course. Yeah, that was funny for about like two weeks, maybe. Yeah, I'm glad that that uh, died, and then the funny picture came back. You know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And it's good for anyone who invested in Dogecoin. Because I'm, <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if that meme died and everyone who had the those coins just like lost all their share because it was based on an unfunny meme? <laughs> Investment well, in the century. It managed to dodge being like 
uh, repurposed into some sort of like white supremacist or Nazi meme. Well, doesn't every everything that you can every picture of something that's generic and you can mold into whatever sort of archetype you want, like Pepe yeah. or Woj, Woj, Wojik. Am I pronouncing that right? Wojak. Yeah. Or yeah. like the Doge yeah, memes. Wojak. Those yeah. are always adopted by 4chan so that they can like identify with them, and those will often become mm. like sort of Nazi symbols. It, it's, I, I'm just glad that Doge yeah. escaped that in a way that Pepe never yeah, did. Yeah, me too, me too. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> yeah, it's it's hard to avoid recuperation of pretty much anything, uh, but uh, it's probably the, the probably the best uh, possible outcome if it's like it's recuperated by uh, everyone, you know? It, the, the more universal mm. the thing is, the better its future can be usually um like uh like for example uh, i was talking earlier about like that boy oh shit what up that that <laughs> wasn't because that wasn't i mean that hasn't been recuperated to my knowledge by any political movement i have never seen this uh, meme associated with politics um yeah, but, not that one. No. Yeah, how do you even? Yeah, you could make it work if you really wanted to, but yeah, I don't see it I'm happening. Sure. Just put an SS. I don't see the. Uh, just put an SS officer's uniform on it or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Put one of the arms up in the air. I mean, you could probably make a funny or a specific iteration of it uh, that is mm -hmm. from a, a specific movement, but I don't think it would spread. Because memes yeah, are yeah. memes are not about the content itself. It's about the spread. It's about how it communicates. I mean, that's why it's often called also like viral content, because it spreads like yeah. a virus, mm -hmm. you know, like from person to person. Uh, and uh, very topical to talk about this in 2020. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, God. Imagine how well yeah. this is going to age with the coronavirus outbreak. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone listening to this? Oh, it's on the tail end now, thank goodness. But yes, yes. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, the the meme, the word meme, as we use it today, was created by a man called Richard Dawkins. Yeah, and it's uh, um, a portmanteau of uh, I think it's uh, Gene and uh, I forgot what the M is. Do you know what it is? Yes, it's uh, Mimema. Uh, which means imitation uh, that it gave uh, it's from Latin and it gave the, the word like mime and uh, oh. uh, that thing that uh, birds and fish do when they blend it in some sort oh, of mimic yeah mimic, yeah. yeah that's yeah that that's um, that's it so gene and uh, 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 mimema which gave us like uh, we, it basically means like imitation or emulation or like blending in or uh, uh, and yeah it gave mime it gave mimic etc so um it's quite a sophisticated etymology for you know like funny yeah. internet pictures you know yeah. mm. yes 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 well originally the meme uh you know was like not specific to internet it was a word from any kind of meme like for example um an example that we often uh, hear about is the um, in a play of Shakespeare, I think it was r the play Richard the uh, Third. One of the characters says, uh, "I don't know how to talk to this person. I don't know how to uh, start a conversation. I don't know how to break the ice." And um, that expression was created by Shakespeare for this play. Break the ice yeah. was not. Uh, an existing expression and Shakespeare created it because well it's kind of uh, you know it's obvious what it means it's very uh, eloquent as an analogy and so it people started saying it like uh, in conversations and it, and it came from a specific book into the language and now it's an expression that is used by everyone uh, since uh, like it's been like four or five centuries so that's really what a meme is it's something from a specific yeah. thing that then becomes a kind of like a running joke or a thing that people repeat and share with each other and that blends from a specific uh, work into a culture, so um, that's uh, that's the basic definition. And it, it also works with internet memes because there's a lot of internet memes that come from specific stuff, like for example the George Costanza uh, with his baseball bat, <laughs> like Seinfeld. Uh, yeah, I love it. And uh, you know, um, 
Loss. That's from a from a web comic. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I mean, there's like a million examples uh, of this. And well, that's why people sometimes say that memes are the DNA of the soul. Uh, when it started like circulating this expression, some people thought it was like just some funny, uh, you know, thing. But it's it's really uh, the the definition. It's like because it goes viral, and and viruses are basically a piece of DNA uh, that then replicates itself inside of our cells you know, using the, the ribosomes and shit. So uh, mm -hmm. so yeah, viral DNA of the. Um, I don't remember who said that, but um, someone said um, memes are to a culture what genes are to a species. I think it would say. Right. Yeah, I think it was said by. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I would definitely uh, say that. I mean, before the internet, the memes that would identify what culture there is would like come through, you know, like stories told through like movies and music. Yeah, that's where you get memes. I mean, memes have probably always existed for as long as humanity has been able to communicate with oh, each yeah. other through yes. language. Yeah, yeah. I would say language and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of evidence that like most times, whenever hunter-gatherer societies were not, you know, foraging for food or, you know, killing animals. They were just talking to each other. And that's probably where a start of a lot of different uh, meme cultures uh, happened. So it's as old as time, really. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. There is a great book about exactly this. Maybe he was the guy who said the quote by a, um, a dude called Douglas Hofstater. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, and I don't know. I don't remember the name of the book, but I'm gonna Google it uh, right now. Douglas Hofstater. Uh, oh, he's still alive. Uh, born in 1945. Um, mm, he wrote a book called. Well, uh, you're gonna have to fill the blanks while I'm reading Wikipedia. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping so. And I mean, I, I, I'm, I like the part where you mentioned uh, Shakespeare inventing the phrase "breaking the ice" and how that entered, uh, and it still survives 400 years later, and it's still used yeah. uh, by people uh, commonly. That's just, um, it's a part of how uh, language and expressions just augment the way people think about uh, certain different things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's uh, so annoying when you see someone like making a, a picture with a caption and say, "Oh, I made a meme." No, please don't. <laughs> there, it's not a meme. Yeah, yeah, you just made a like I made memes and jokes screenshot. out of images on Tumblr, but not a not a lot of them ever became what I would truly call a meme. Like, there's that e meme. Yeah. There is um, dumb thoticus, and there's maybe about five yeah. of their posts that got like a couple like. Uh, dozen thousand um, uh, different notes and got uh, augmented and remembered by people. Those are probably what I consider memes because they entered a sort of uh, mind space of a lot of different yes, people. Yes, absolutely. Enough for them to start reposting and telling the, these jokes to other people because they understood it with one another. That's when a meme, tra that's when a joke transcends and becomes uh, a sort of meme, I think. You know, it, it, it's it's muddy to understand that sort of concept because uh, a lot of people just consider memes any given picture. You know, yeah. anytime you give a anytime you take yeah. a funny caption, uh, that's a meme. And uh, I don't really uh, tend to argue with people about that, but I don't consider them mm. memes until they become popular. You know. Yeah. Oh, great example of a meme I just thought of is like the Wilhelm scream. You know what the Wilhelm scream yes, is? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I do know about the Wilhelm and scream. That's a really so good example. For the, people, for the people listening who don't uh, know what it's about, it's like a scream of a character, a background character in an obscure movie from a really long time ago. I think it was like from 100 years ago. I think it was and from 1950-something, was... and it was adopted into oh, a couple different okay. movies. And it exploded when Star Wars used it a couple different times in their films. Yeah. And from the yeah, 70s yeah, yeah. onward, it just got used as sort of an inside yeah, joke. Spielberg uses it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It, that's a really good example There's of a, a meme predating the internet, for sure. Mm. Oh, it was used a lot in the video game Metal Slug. I would love this video game. And uh, <laughs> there's a lot of time when you kill the soldiers when they make this specific scream. Uh, for the people listening, I'm going to put a sample of the scream uh, right now.
when I hope I'm not gonna get uh, like copyright striked or anything. But I don't think you can for something that's short. But uh, we'll we'll be yet uh, to see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, but if it's under two seconds, normally you can't but uh you know people will strike even if they don't have the right to strike um, yeah of course i'd like to see them try because i'm almost positive the wilhelm <laughs> scream is in the public domain isn't it mm. yeah yeah it must be yeah. probably is yes so i found the book by douglas hofstader it's not really a book it's an anthology it's a compilation of a, co a collection of articles that he wrote for a magazine called Scientific American during the early 1980s. And it was published as an anthology in 1985. Uh, so the book is called Meta Magical Themes questing for the essence of mind and pattern. Uh, so there's a little blurb on uh, Wikipedia that say major themes include self-reference in memes, language, art and logic, discussions of philosophical issues important in cognitive science and AI, analogies and what makes something similar to something else. And uh, so uh, a lot of stuff like this. This guy was like uh, <laughs> writing philosophical stuff about AI in the early the 80s they were really uh, ahead of its time i think this is a great uh thinker douglas hofstadter one of the greatest american uh thinkers in in my opinion in the and, modern uh, age yeah, for certainly i would oh yeah i would advise any anyone to read uh this uh, metamagical metamagical theme as book uh it's really worth it cool yeah and uh, yeah 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 Oh, uh, before I forget, I wanted to ask a question about your nickname. Uh, so, um, just for the people listening uh, who don't know, uh, cyan is a kind of color that is especially used in uh, printing. Uh, because when you print something, you, you have to use uh, something that is called subtractive synthesis, and it's on the overwhelming majorities of printing uh, devices. It's four uh, inks that are used. Uh, magenta, which is a really special, a really weird color. Look up videos mm -hmm. about the color magenta for your mind to be blown. There's yellow that is very well known, and cyan, and the fourth is uh, black. black. Yeah. So CMYK system. I, I do a lot of print design for my job, so I know this very well. So I wonder if uh, it has something to do with a graphic design or something else. It's sort of a ref. I picked the uh, moniker Cyan probably when I was uh, a, a young teenager. It, it's sort of a callback to. Um, I mean, I spend a lot of time around printers, so that's probably how the uh, word entered my mind. But the the specific color cyan itself, um, I just think it's pretty neat. And the word, I think, mm. is just uh, just sort of interesting to look at. And that's just how that that's really all there is to it. That's just how it started, the, the cyan thing. And I've just stuck to that ever since. It's probably been like eight years or so since I've been nice. referring to myself as cyan on the Internet. I, I use that just because I don't like um, I never liked using my real name or yeah. uh, anything on the internet. I keep that I, uh, identity stuff pretty serious. So yeah, uh -huh. uh, you're not gonna be able to find my real name or anything like that. It's always just cyan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beware, because saying it like this sounds like a challenge. I know, I, I hope I, I, I hope no one uh, feels the need to be challenged because it's not really worth your effort. Yeah. I, I don't know yeah. what you would <laughs> do with that information, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, cyan uh, is a color that is very close to the color of the sky when it's like really blue, but like with a really tiny bit of green tinge to it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like so turquoise it's, almost. I would say. Mm. Yeah, it's it's in the middle. I would say between the blue sky and and turquoise. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh it's if you are like old like me you've seen this color a million times in a lot of windows 95 stuff uh because it was like a color that's really easy to render for computers uh, it's uh just like magenta it's been used in a, a shitload of uh, old um, apps and video games and software. Um, I think the company, mm. I think the video game company that created the Mist series, like with Mist, Riva, and etc., was called Cyan. Yes, I, I think so. Or maybe it was um, pronounced uh, differently or something. 
And yeah, it's it's crazy because it, it was really a, d a different thing. Uh, that game was created basically entirely with uh, Adobe Photoshop, which was like a really new thing at the time in the early 90s. Really? I and, didn't know uh, that. Oh. Yeah, because there, there's no, there's basically no 3D in this game. It's just you go kind of like from a photo to another photo. It's kind of like uh, almost like a, a comic book in video game form. You don't really walk. You, you it's a point and click, and uh, you go from yeah. a, from a rendered scene to another rendered scene. Kind of like in Resident uh, Evil and on the PlayStation. Yeah, kind of the same. Kind of the same. Um, uh, uh, technique, except you don't have a character that, that that walks. I mean, you don't see it's it's like first person, and uh, yeah, it was made pretty much entirely in in Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Especially that's especially surprising to hear because I I didn't know that it was made in Photoshop that early into the nineties. I've never played Mist, but I've heard plenty about it as a point and click game. That that's um yeah. I played um the third one, Exile. Mm -hmm. Um. It's a very impressive looking game. Yeah, I'm not really much into uh, point and click uh, games myself, but, you know, respect. I, I knew about Cyan being the studio just because of the name, just hearing it in mm. passing, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like not 100% a point and click. I mean, it was really different between uh, of the other point and clicks at the time. And I think it was uh, like the maybe not the inspiration, but clearly um, when I, when I think about games like Portal, for example, or uh, the Talos Principle, they are they have a lot of, in common despite having a lot of FPS mechanics. They're puzzle games uh, at heart, and um, I think it's like the continuation of uh, like there's, there was Mist in the '90s, then in the 2000s there was Portal, and then more recently there was like the Talos Principle. Um, oh, well, there was also this game called. Anti Chamber, such a great game. Oh, I read that's, it. That's, I got genuinely stumped in that game. The, yeah. the puzzle was just actually bending my brain, so I had to stop. I've never played yeah. that, but yeah, you guys seem to be giving it some praise. <laughs> yeah, Anti Chamber. It's, yeah, it's um, it's really unique in my opinion. Like I've played a lot of games and. Often video games have a lot of similarities with each other, but this one is the only game I can think uh, that is close is Mist, but it's not uh, really similar. And like Anti Chamber, um, it was it was an experience. It was a thing that like, it, that it disorients you uh, because like it's kind of like your MC Escher painting or stuff like this, mm. where when you go from room to room, the everything changes the perspective, the up, the down, the whatever. It's uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a crazy uh, world uh, of puzzles, and it's like it's very minimalistic in its aesthetics. Uh, a lot of rooms are just it's, it's like a labyrinth. It'll it'll take you back to earlier places yes and and really like really waste your time if you if you're not sharp <laughs> waste your time in a very entertaining way in my opinion yeah but yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. like it's, <laughs> it's like super and um well you know i um i'm not afraid I, i'm not ashamed to admit that uh when i finished the game i cried a little really that's uh mm. yeah that's the only time a, a video game uh did that to me i think uh because i was like i was like um a little overwhelmed by the fact that i finished the game because it's, it's quite hard and uh like i i made it to the end and i was also sad that it was finished because it's such a great game and i enjoyed so much being in that world um i i think um if you like puzzles it's not honestly i've played a lot of puzzle games and it's not one of the hardest uh, but it takes some, it's kind of like Dark Souls. When you figure it out, <laughs> it's not that hard, but it's hard to figure out. Yeah, it's like, it's like hard to learn, but like once you get there, it's really rewarding. Yeah. Those yes. are the best kinds yes. of games. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, I totally agree. Yeah. I don't know. I never, I haven't played a lot of video games, um, especially not recently, but uh, I, I was never really into puzzle games um, outside like, you know, like Tetris. <laughs> But like, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's really interesting to hear. I mean, good games will make you uh, get emotional when you uh, leave them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, that. yes. 
Uh, Where we talking about memes earlier? How'd, how'd this get this far off the track? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I have a question. What's that? And, uh, let me know if this goes too off off track. But um, what what do you like most about the deep fried aesthetic to memes? Um, I've sort of grown. I'm gonna be honest. I've sort of grown past this sort of aesthetic just because I think it's uh, it went a little uh, overdone uh, uh, about a year or two ago. <laughs> But um, what I used to like is that it's just sort of it, it sort of it was easy to really approach. And it was uh, once you got there, it sort of leveled out any of the um, imperfections in a Photoshop or in a particular image. It made things sort of um, coalesce together a little bit once you added a bunch of really distorting effects that made it uh, seem like yeah. a real roughed up old meme. And it just sort of gave it this uh-huh. rustic and uh unserious vibe that really helps uh add to the the humor of a situation you know oh, where are we yeah. i've also read that um it 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 sort of like fakes uh an age to it because mm. um i think absolutely memes yes. were becoming mostly deep fried because if they're re-uploaded uh and recompressed like a hundred times then they start to artifact yeah, it's, so like if you mm-hmm. if you deep fry it yourself it's like you're artificially creating an age to it yeah that's yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. how that's how i became introduced to the uh deep fried method because that started on instagram when like pictures that were reposted a lot like got that fried mm-hmm. like naturally like that's how they yes, just looked yeah, when people yeah. added filters and just kept screenshotting on their really crappy phones <laughs> and then re-uploading them again and then the cycle would continue. And I was exposed to that a lot when I was running that uh, Instagram meme account when I was just reposting stuff. And uh, mm-hmm. so I, I sort of adopted the deep fried uh, culture really early, probably like two years before uh, it ever got truly popular, I think. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's it's um it's a way to make a meme sort of seem uh more ridiculous. It's an indicator of the mood <laughs> that it's supposed to carry, which is what I, why I like like it so much, you know. To this day still, but I I've, I've sort of drawn away from it a little bit. Yeah, that's why I really loved it in in, in the first place because it, it's it was not something that came out ex nihilo, but it was emulating uh, this uh, Instagram teenager culture that you uh, Instagram is um, you know it um, compresses JPEGs a lot, probably the most, but it's uh, it's a little yeah, better now, also, but it still does it a, a little bit. I'm on Instagram yeah. still, and it, it, it you don't really see memes that you you can tell a meme has been reposted before, but you can't tell like how bad it is just by looking at the image uh, artifacts. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah, but it, for for a while it happened a lot, uh, not only on Instagram but also on Twitter a lot, and Facebook as well. Um, so um, yeah, there's that a, was like um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's but a little bit of that like. on Tumblr and stuff when they take memes from other accounts mm-hmm. and then those uh, other websites take them back from Tumblr. Every once in yeah. a while you would see something like that on Tumblr, but not yeah, often. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and what happened a lot is that the memes were not like downloaded, but they were screenshotted, and um, yeah. yeah, and it also it it co- it corresponds basically at the beginning of the overwhelming popularity of smartphones, uh, mm. when they were not anymore a niche thing or something for enthusiasts, mm. but something that everyone used. So about ten years ago, and uh, so uh, a lot of these early smartphones especially the budget ones had a, a, a low resolution with not a really great screen so when you screenshotted it you screenshotted a, an image that was not only compressed but also you know um, probably crops like size. shit you know yeah that's yeah, another yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a hallmark of the deep fried meme when it's just so terribly cropped yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I I really love the fact <laughs> that uh the pride memes like emulated that flow uh of uh, uh I mean flow that that yeah the artifacts uh of JPEGs that have been uh downloaded and cropped and compressed and uh you know screenshotted a bunch of times. It's uh, a lot of time a lot of the times meme cultures uh or, or meme culture singular takes things that already exist and then they turn it they turn it up to 11 
and it becomes mm. really funny. That's kind of what happened with the word swag, uh, like in 2011, <laughs> 2012, when it was just like some, <laughs> it, it's the same, it was just like a, a, an in, um, Instagram teenager or a Twitter teenager uh, trend, uh, but then like it was turned up to 11 by uh, by memers, and that's when it became like really funny. Yeah. Um, I think there could be a swag always. revival today. I, I think we're right oh, yeah. that. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I, I agree. Yeah, um, and uh, there's a lot of stuff like the word "yeet" is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, Yolo also. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I remember. Uh, what are, a lot of what times are some other always, ones? Uh, there's plenty of. Uh, there's plenty of internet things. terminology that's ripe for being uh, parodied, but they're always done on a smaller scale. Um, mm -hmm. There's one, you know, based. Lat word from 4chan. I see that get parodied every yeah, once in a yeah, while. Yeah. That might become like a big meme, but I'm not sure just because it's not exactly a ubiquitous sort of word, you know? I've seen people saying, um, based on what, all of a sudden. That's funny. <laughs> I like that. I saw yeah. the, um, yeah. I saw the, the Breaking Bad, um, it's like Jesse <laughs> and Walt. Just uh, Jesse's just saying, yeah, based. And, and, and Walt's just saying, like, Based on what? It's like, nice. you know, owning the libs. <laughs> yeah, you know. I like that name format. That's funny. Yeah. It It's so old based. I remember when I first got into meme culture, uh, like really, when I started like going on 4chan all the time and stuff, it was in 2008, and based was already a meme. Uh, and that was used for pretty much everything i mean at the time they they say the whole thing that is thank you based god it's a reference to a mm. rapper called little b uh but little uh, b. yeah but yeah I, I saw it like in uh, in a lot of uh even on some uh like french uh meme forums and shit people will saying like uh merci dieu basé uh, just like translating it like in the worst way possible and based had, has been around for a really long time it's probably one of the oldest memes that is still circulating today along with like loss and uh i don't know yeah and those uh, ones are the ones that are timeless the ones that probably won't uh be truly dead uh, for a long mm -hmm. time, you know. Uh, that's what I like yeah, about. Yeah, yeah most of the insults as well. They tend to last a long time. I feel like people will be saying "cuck" and "soy" and stuff like that for a while. Yeah, I really? think soy will probably explode once, like soylent and like soy milk and shit. That once that becomes like really <laughs> yeah. mainstream, like that'll be a big thing. Huh? Because uh, recently I have not seen them almost never. Um, that was a terrible double negative uh, apology. Uh, <laughs> You're okay. But, <laughs> we understand. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I used to see like soy and cock all the time a few years ago. But at the moment, it's super rare. And I see people like using them like maybe ironically, like very uh, with a lot of layers or of, of irony. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the, it's, it's the, becoming the, pretty rare. It'll be. It'll come back. Say the f yeah. Oh, probably yeah. The yeah. form the form it's in at the moment is like the the soy wojak with the the mouth open all yeah, the way. Yeah, that really um, disgusting beard. I see beard. him posted. Yeah, in response to anyone being too fanboyish or whatever, I see <laughs> that and like. Yeah, um, yeah that will that'll definitely become yeah. a meme. I'm not sure when that's going to start getting like parodied, parodied, but it'll be in the future. I, it's definitely going to come back eventually because there's too many of those weird sort of like way too right uh, young men who don't get laid that keep using it as if it's like a sort of real terminology, those poor souls. Mm. As long as they're going to keep using that unironically, <laughs> people will be um, ironically using it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when it started, there was like, especially two words that were uh, used all the time. It was like soy boy and bug men uh and like <laughs> the soy thing it stayed and the bug thing it disappeared really fast and I'm not sure why because they were they were almost all the time used uh at, at the same time or the you know they, they were used by the same people in the same conversations mm -hmm. um cock started before and cock will probably leave longer because it's it's really a, it's a funny word yeah and it's just based saying. on that weird <laughs> fetish and as long as it like, yeah. it like that's gonna people are gonna be doing that weird shit forever and as long as that's as funny as it is today like it's gonna be used as a meme 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And also, I think um, I think you, you almost buy into the fetish by uh, demoralizing people who yeah. Who engage You're only them. making them more powerful. So like, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you want to yeah. stop cuckoldry, you have to stop talking about it. You can't feed that uh, that troll. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it has uh, kind of been replaced lately by the word simp. A little bit, yeah. Oh, true. I think I mean they're definitely sort of different words, but when people say simp. Usually they mean it in the same way they say cuck, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, probably a lot of copycat words and stuff like that will pop up every once in a while. Yeah, I can definitely buy more into the the concept of simp. However, because like like these guys who, who are like oh, all women are, are queens and like put women on a on a pedestal just because they're women. It's a it's a different kind of sexism, but it's still sexism and yeah. it still sucks. So I, I think they should be uh, I think they should be mocked. Just like um, soy boy uh, is is great because people who buy Funko Pops should be mocked. Uh, <laughs> it's it's God, a very thing. fair oh, thing. Yeah. And they okay. absolutely okay. deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah uh, the, the problem with the word simp is like now it's being used for everything and it's like I never really know how to feel about these uh, things. Uh, 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 not so long ago the same thing happened with Boomer. Like uh, it, it, it started as very much a uh, um, an abbreviation of baby boomer and it was used against yeah. old people that were like born in the 50s mm-hmm. but then boomer became uh like a substitute for millennial suck with technology yeah yeah or just millennials uh like people who are like 30 years old like the millennials are, are called boomers um, all the time now yeah. and it became like in- interchangeable I, I remember like um i remember a while, a while ago seeing a meme uh, and uh, of like uh, Boomer versus Zoomer, and the Boomer was Anthony Fentano. Oh, uh, Jesus, and, and he's like that, what, like thirty five? Not even Gen X, not even close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah now Boomer 30... just means someone just old and out of touch. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, think that and simp are probably going to like sort of fade out and just be remembered as like weird slang eventually. The same way that people think of like tubular mm-hmm. in the nineties, we're gonna think of like simp. In like the 2020s, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Simp's lasting power will come from the fact that um, I've seen it used as like in replace of uh, white knight. Just if you're like being yes too nice to a girl, you're like you're simping. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's uh, ever yeah, going to become the... like a real word or if that's going to get uh, eventually oh, yeah, fade yeah. out and then replaced in by the something world, else. I don't think it'll. Last. Yeah, I don't think you One can that... say simp in real life and uh, expect people to not look at you funny. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One that has been going strong for a long time and that probably will live on very long is cringe. Mm, uh, yeah. One I, of the things that I, I don't like about cringe is that it, there's no uh, synonyms in English for cringe. You just have to say cringe. Mm-hmm. There's nothing else that yes. describes uh, cringe at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should try to find a, a word that already exists. Uh, but yeah, there's no word in French to translate it either. So uh, I just pronounce it. Frenchly, like when I took French, like yeah, cringe. yeah, uh, yeah. But, just make sure to put the yeah, vowel in the back no... of your throat, and it doesn't sound cringe. English at all. Yeah, there's there's probably a word in some language, like maybe Japanese or Suomi or some language Suomi. from Africa. I don't know, but it has to exist. Like the the I don't know. It's it's a great concept. Yeah, and, it's sort uh, of a complex concept, have seen though. I could see it not existing in a language that doesn't have like a. A uh, big culture of uh, uh, verbal interchange, like the way that English does. It, it could not. Maybe might, it might not pop up in like a a tribe setting. I can imagine they don't have that concept, mostly because people don't, you know, I know that line in a tribe or something like that. You know what I mean? In German, they have Schadenfreude or Schadenfreude. Yeah, yeah. Um, which isn't actually like the entirety of what cringe is, but it's some some important aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, it's sort of the pleasure uh, in other people's embarrassment yeah. or, It's the enjoyment of yeah. secondhand embarrassment itself. German has a lot of those uh, more obscure uh, concept mm-hmm. words that I enjoy. Yeah, Schadenfreude mm-hmm. is is really like uh, the world star. You know, when you see someone <laughs> when you see, <laughs> see someone sleeping on a banana peel, and instead of helping them, you laugh. Yeah, that's when you see, like, a fight in a Popeyes, and you just cheer it on instead. That is Schadenfreude. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's something that is really huge uh, in a lot of cultures that there's like America's funniest home videos. Mm. Uh, we, yeah. have, we have the same thing in France called Video Gag. There's a lot of uh, YouTube compilations of people falling and getting hurt and just yeah. for laughs. Yeah, it's just uh, the, it's the base jackass. of humor. Oh yeah, jackass. And, uh, Fuck. and recently people like Superhuman. <laughs> What's that? Well, basically, he's the he's a guy who does jackass stuff on YouTube. He makes a lot of videos that are really short, and he has some shticks, you know, that he says all the time. He's a juggalo, so uh, he says, uh, oh, "Juggalos and juggalettes, whoop whoop." And then his, <laughs> his catchphrase, he has a catchphrase like "fuck this shit," and then he does something like uh, jumping on a. a a bunch of cactus uh, or you know oh, uh, boy. In, in, injecting hot sauce into his nose or stuff like this and what and, uh, what injecting yeah hot- yeah he yeah, that sounds awful. Yeah, uh, he 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 did a lot of stuff um, with hot sauce, and uh, there were sometimes uh, where he stepped on a lot of Lego. Uh, Lego there stepping on Legos is not as bad as people say. That's not that's not even in the same like the yeah. at, just like atmosphere as uh, jumping on cacti. Honestly, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, I so remember cool. when I when I discovered him. Uh, it was a video where he grated his forehead with a cheese grater. He what? No. Ew. Well, that's just exfoliation at first. So that's not bad. <laughs> yeah. I, pretty much every woman I've ever met pretty much does that to themselves. You know. But 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 yeah, uh, he's called Superhuman with two M <laughs> with two M's, and. Uh, he uh, and he has these videos where he's also always like NFL style. Oh, uh, uh, getting naked and, and jumping into a bunch of barbed wire, NFL style. NFL uh, style. Just, uh, What's that? Oh, it's um, NFL is a thing in the the USA of it's a kind of sports. Yeah, I, I uh, live there. Is, I know about it. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like it's like rugby, but people wear like this kind of uh, Power ra- Power Rangers uh, plastic suits. Yeah, and they all get dementia because it's uh, extremely damaging. Yeah, I, I oh, live yeah. in America. Yeah. It's the most popular sport. Every American knows what football is. What American football okay. is specifically? Okay. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, uh, I know it must be super knew- obscure. Otherwise, it just looks like weird rugby rugby elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think the most famous is like John Madden because we, we all know the John Madden video games. Yo, John Madden. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised that American football doesn't take off elsewhere in the world because it, it is super, super popular in America. It's like mm-hmm. soccer for the rest of the world. This might be a bit by the wayside, but um, the, for, there were these fun, the videos uploaded onto YouTube that were the the NASA space game. Um, NASA made some simulator. Oh, I know what simulator. you're talking about. I know what you're getting to. And the text to speech that became a big joke. People typing in, and then like the robot would speak. Here comes a Chinese earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know that. And uh, John Madden was a meme amongst that those that series of videos. Yeah, those are those were funny. Um, I remember those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the impact yeah. of uh, football on the world. That and, that, <laughs> yeah. uh, that and yeah. early onset dementia and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Um, I think American football is kind of boring, though. It's it's just it's just like chess, but like less uh, ethically uh, sound, you know, <laughs> I'd say mm. strategic. But like all the pieces are real people who actually get injured every game. You know, uh, there's a lot of time when people are like not playing at all and they're just like waiting for stuff. It's, it's there's a lot of uh, Anglo-Saxon sports that I like this. There's like baseball, cricket, so like where it's just a lot of waiting and not a lot of action. Yeah, yeah. cricket's um, real sleepy. It's the opposite of soccer, where there's just where people are moving every second and you just you can't take your eyes off mm. the screen. Uh, that's one of the things yeah. that football does well is that you can use those 45 minute breaks in between every two seconds of actual like sport to just like talk about the game (laughs) or grab a snack, you know, something like that. That's, that's the beauty of a game like that, that and baseball and stuff. Yeah. But I I enjoy, I enjoy soccer a little bit more. I enjoy, um, what's the Australian, uh, footy, uh, Australian football league. I like that. Oh, AFL. Yeah. Yeah, That's that is. Yeah. I dig it too. Yeah. That's going to get, Probably bigger in the United States. I hear people talk about it every once in a while. That is oh, really? that is legendary. That that is some cool looking uh, 
bullshit. It's like it's like all the athletics. Yeah, of, yeah, no one bangs the head. Yeah, no one like smacks the head into each other. I mean, people are all over each other. That it looks brutal as hell, but yeah, you know, yeah. it's probably <laughs> it's got more safety provisions than uh, American football. I'm sure. Yeah, it, it's like it sort of has a wrestling component. Um, but the the object is not to like submit the other person. You just sort of you can put you can wrap your arms around them and sort of try and wrestle them to the ground. That's like the the extent of it. Yeah, I mean they're climbing over each other's backs, but somehow it's safer. Oh, that looks painful. Actually, yeah. the if you're just standing there waiting for the ball to come to you, someone's gonna run up behind and try and like jump on your yeah, shoulders. and like break your collarbones and shit just for a fucking catch yeah. that they don't even get. Smack the knee in the back or whatever. Yeah. it's just crazy. for like what like two points or some shit, whatever. A like free kick. <laughs> They don't score anything. They just get the uh, the ability to take a kick without anyone tackling them. Like, they can just sort of stand there and plan. Yeah, but they are legendary to look at, so everyone likes them, you know? It looks pretty damn good. Yeah, but other than that, you know, not much injuries in that sport, uh, which is nice. There's that in basketball. Yeah, they're all just like hamstrings and whatever. Just Yeah, but that's like normal athletic or... stuff, you know? Oh, and then when they get injured, yeah, they don't yeah. cry about it like soccer players, you know? They don't have to like wince no, on the field if they get carried off. You get a penalty if you tackle badly, but it, if you really hurt the dude, you don't get like... Mm. A, you don't send the player off the field or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I appreciate. I, I like that sport. I, I watch it every once in a while, but it's hard just because all the because yeah. all the Australian football league games are scheduled to, like live at like three a.m. in America, so right. you can't. I can't watch right. them live here. But yeah, I've heard about that. It's a it's a good uh, it's a nice uh, sort of sport. I think football will die once some um, colleges stop being so ubiquitous in the United States. That's what's keeping up the uh, industry. You know. Hmm. Yeah, probably. Yeah, mm. yeah. A college football and, uh, is a lot bigger. Is probably as big as uh, Ameri- is the NFL. That's probably why it's still popular. But eventually, colleges will stop being able to fund sports leagues. You know, they're they're already on their way out. So. Mm. Okay. And to my understanding, the the amount of injuries, especially long lasting stuff like concussions, uh, is caused mostly by the uh, equipment that is used for, um, you know, the the shoulder pads and the helmets and all that. Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The more protection equipment you have, the more uh, likely you are to get badly injured. A great example of this is boxing. Uh, mm-hmm. for, uh, when it started, boxing the boxers didn't have gloves; they just punched. Uh, each other with bare their fists. bare hands. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And um, so because of that, you have to be mindful of how hard you hit. Because if you hit someone too hard, especially like uh, around the face and the cranium, you risk you break, break your own hand. You would break yeah. in your fingers. Yes. So uh, when gloves started intro- uh, starting being introduced, there was like a huge spike in numbers of injuries and deaths, uh, which were before quite rare in the world of boxing. Because when people didn't have gloves, they had to hit not too hard or they would break their fingers. So it was a relatively mm. safe sport with very few injuries and almost no deaths. And the injuries and deaths started like really exploding when gloves were introduced to the sport. So uh, I think the, the reason why maybe American football has so many injuries and people who are like uh, having like dementia and, and whatever else uh, that is caused by all these uh, hits on the head. Mm. Uh, maybe if they switch to rugby, it's quite similar it was uh, it, it it would be like better i don't know well it uh, would be that definitely players would get injured like much much less like it, there probably wouldn't it would probably be to the point where there wouldn't be a huge controversy around the amount of concussions yeah. in football but the problem is that a lot of americans are sort of ignorant to the thing itself the issue and that if they did take off all their sort of uh, protection and only had the bare essentials and they were thus safer with um, how they played and uh, how they moved about, it would be a less interesting sport to watch. And I think that that's sort of the um, type of uh, capitalistic uh, uh, ethical sort of thing that football watchers don't really want to give up. You know, they'd rather have a couple of people who are willing to, uh, you know, possibly get very seriously injured for the Uh sort of the sake of the game, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you guys heard or seen these uh, Japanese soccer where they wear reversed binoculars? What? 
I've never even heard of that. <laughs> Reverse <They're>, binoculars? <laughs> like, the... The Japanese, so it's all like really small and far away. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the um, the Japanese have a, a really a love for weird sports. Yeah, they do. Uh, and uh, that's why baseball is so popular over there. It is a strange sport. And yeah. uh, <laughs> one of them, um, there's one where they have like kind of like a a flag on a wooden pole and they have to jump on each other to try to capture. I've the flag. heard that. But, I think that's more a military but, exercise than a genuine like spectator sport though still interesting regardless but yeah but yeah in, in, there's a thing in japan that they do where they play well basically soccer uh but they have inverse inverted binoculars so uh it always seems to them that the ball is far away so they're all getting confused and bumping into each other oh. it's, it's very very entertaining uh, I think if you look up Japanese <laughs> soccer binoculars, you probably find a lot of uh, videos of that. It's, it's it's great. Those sort of niche sports and is what I love about uh, Japanese culture. The the ability to sort of uh, do things that are a little bit more niche and esoteric, and um, but ultimately like funny. You know, it, I think Japan's about like twenty years ahead of Western culture as far as that sort of thing is concerned. We're gonna start be making some. Uh, weird sports in the future. Just wait. And oh see. yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure that the sports we enjoy today would probably seem very weird to people uh, from a while ago. Yeah. Um, Not even like a uh, hundred years ago, people the sports were very different, and today they must look very strange. You know. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. That's true. Uh, it, there's, well, it's, esports are also becoming quite big. Oh, that too. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting phenomenon. I, I can't wait to see how that sort of evolves, especially like Dota and CSGO yeah. and stuff. Those are interesting. I've been watching mm. a lot of um, I've been watching a lot of Tetris Classic Championship, like the, and this wow. it's, it's so great. I love it. Those things are crazy. Those people have the just throbbing brains. Just like you can see, like their skull is just like expanding as they play. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever yeah. seen that? Man, those things are like flying down like bullets and they keep putting them in the right spot. It's nuts. Yeah. Extremely yeah, entertaining. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminds me of ping pong at the Olympics. Like, you know, you play it as a as a kid or whatever and you hit it fairly slowly oh, yeah. across the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. And then you see it at the Olympics and it's like you can't actually see the ball oh at gosh. all. Almost. It's just going back and forth just so quick. That is insane. Yeah. yeah the, I think it isn't that the national sport in China or something? Yeah, those guys are just thwack that thing a thousand miles an hour, and they somehow hit it back. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. get hit with one of those yeah, things, like you it. die. It goes right through your body. It gets embedded inside <laughs> it, at the very least. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, like when the Forrest Gump uh, becomes a champion of ping pong. Yes, and he, goes, yeah. he goes in China <laughs> to fight the world. So that's it's so great. Uh, yeah, yeah, professional ping pong at an Olympic level, and the guys are so far from the table, like they they're like. Oh my god! Ten meters away from the table and hitting the, the ball like it's it's crazy. Uh, yeah, professional ping pong is very impressive. Yes, extremely. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't even know how that sort of culture started. You know, uh, it's insane to watch. Mm. Uh, it looks yeah, dangerous uh, almost. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably less dangerous than American football. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But still, I mean, it's a, still a ping pong ball, regardless of if it's, it's a thousand yeah. miles an hour, but it's still ping pong. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a hollow plastic ball. But uh, I think uh, uh, the reason that a lot of sports are becoming kind of boring, especially recently, is uh, the standardization of a competition. Uh, mm, yeah. For ex an, an example is that for a very, very long time, uh, the Olympic Games had many more sports and some of them were not even sports like for example there was like a poetry competition at the only there were like people who Wait, really? poets would go to yes uh, until relatively recently like a hundred years ago and for reference the olympic games started in ancient greece so um well they started most... in ancient greece but then they got revived in like the late late 1800s or something Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think until the 1940s, uh, there were like a poetry competition and stuff like this. And uh, the reason it got phased out, it was because um, 
it was uh, judged too hard to having an, an objective uh, method of you know ranking and uh, giving yeah. like grades like for example if you see someone running you just count the number of seconds and you go uh, you see the running speed it's easy mm -hmm. uh, same for jumping you just measure the distance so it's easy to see uh, who won but like for poetry it was like too subjective and it was too hard to rate uh, so uh, that's why it was like stopped but I would really love if this kind of stuff was um, starting again. People take sports yeah, me too. and competition way too seriously now. Mm. It was it was rarely such a big deal. Even in, in the circus games in Rome and all that, uh, people were not there to really see who would win. They were like, they were there to be entertained. So, uh, and yeah, entertainment and, and sports, uh, it's, it's like so serious at the moment. Uh, and it's like, it's very frustrating in my opinion. It's serious it's because there's not much more uh, things going on in a lot of the uh, people's lives who watch and compete within sports, you know? Like, it's a, it, it, if you notice, it's like the amount of seriousness that people take in sports corresponds directly with, like, if there's any sort of war or, like, a civil unrest or something going on in the, the zeitgeist of the culture which watches that sport. That's when sports become more serious mm. is when there's more peace, you know? Huh. That's when, yeah, that's when like, a sort of conflict needs to be generated in order to keep people, like, uh, happy or something, you know? Uh, the ancient yeah, yeah. Roman sort of saying of uh, pan and circus, which is, like, just sort of keep people fed and entertained and they won't, like, you know, uh, uprise or oh, change yeah, or anything. Yeah, circus, yeah. That's how you yeah, get absolutely. Happy. So that's how uh, sports get serious, and I think... Um, that probably won't change unless there's a sort of a different change in culture of sports itself or if something, you know, ultimately worse and not worth uh, a little bit lighter hard hearted sports happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still think that uh, sports could be less serious and still as much entertaining or more entertaining because the point uh, is to keep people entertained whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing the point is entertainment so i, I still think sports would uh, be probably more entertaining if there were le less square i mean uh honestly i used to be an athlete i played a ton of sports when i was young and i almost went uh, some uh, semi-professional in in tennis fucking love tennis really and uh yeah, yeah and uh now I'm trying to become one again. I've done a lot of lifting um, in the gym recently. I'm very frustrated that uh, the gyms are closed because oh of COVID-19. Normally that should reopen in two weeks. They better uh, open in two weeks. Week. I've I've lost <laughs> a ton of gains that I got uh, first semester yeah. of college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so despite the fact that I play a lot of sports and I did that for a really long time and I love sports sports are amazing I love playing sports but seeing sports on TV often is like it's boring I've, tr I've tried mm -hmm. I've tried uh, watching TV sports a lot of the time and like I don't th I don't find them that much uh, entertaining and if there were a little more um if they had a little more loose feel to it, I think it would be it would be much better. That's just my opinion. Maybe I, I'm talking out of my ass, but no, that makes sense. I, totally I, I struggle. I struggle with streamers with uh, video games. Um, just uh, a large part of me just wants to be playing the hmm. game, or or you know, I'm, and that's what it's like for sports as well. Sometimes, yeah, I can't watch I'd any esport of a game that I play like. Every once, even if I play the game like once in a while, I can't watch an esport of a game without getting amped and like loading it up myself, and then not doing well. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's... But I think certain personalities love it. Mm -hmm. They like prefer to watch rather than play. Yeah, but because of that, because of that, that's why my favorite uh, esports and let's plays are when it's a shitty game. You don't want, <laughs> when you don't want to play the game, you can fully enjoy the entertainment provided by the players. Uh, that's why uh, the best, probably the best Game Grumps content ever was like the Sonic the Hedgehog the 2006. 
uh, when oh, yeah, yeah. The, the game is shit and they both are shit at playing it they're not they're not good and so there it's just the entertainment is provided the game is like the decor it's not the primary focus and the the entertainment uh, you know comes uh, parallel to the game and not exclusively from the game and yeah. that's why yeah. it's in my that's the kind of esports that i really like yeah that's less um, i would say that's less of a true esport and more of like a different sort of entertainment competition no less and you can consider it a sport but if it's more personality driven, then like sort of uh, you're entertained by the performance of the person who's playing a game that you know well. Yeah, that's that's it more, becomes comedy. That's something different. I you could probably make a different term for that. I don't know what you would call that, but it's definitely. I would say there's a difference between say competitive um, Counter Strike Global Offensive and uh, mm-hmm. sort of watching two people sort of race each other, uh, speed running something. You know, and yeah. just being yeah. silly and having fun with them. Um, uh, the the ridiculousness of the situation, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that's that's why sports commenters are often, you know, making a lot of jokes and stuff like this uh, to try and keep the people like uh, focused. Because if you focus too hard on uh, on just the action, I, I don't think you can really be uh, be entertained. You but, can uh, if you like are so obsessed with this particular esport or sport itself that you know like what's happening like if you can commentate it for yourself you can watch a high level sport without anyone talking over it but if you're not so intimate with the um in- with the uh the, the the nuances of a specific game you that's when a commentator mm-hmm. transforms it into something a lot more watchable yeah, they they yeah. introduce you to the players and stuff. Yeah, like I I, I can't watch a lot of esports without good commentation. Sometimes they're mm-hmm. cringy and I I can't uh, I can't watch. <laughs> they make too much like weird like sort of internet meme jokes and I can't stand it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah ironic coming yeah, from that- a meme guy, you know, can't stand too much of it <laughs> in the wrong place. <laughs> I- I think that's why I enjoyed the Tetris Championship, uh, World Championship, so much. Despite the fact that it's not super entertaining to watch, the commenters are great, mm-hmm. and uh, really, it, uh, there were even a meme of uh, there were one of the commenters who will always say "boom" when someone made a made a Tetris, and uh, there was like the the finale um, of the championship, like uh, in uh, 2016, I think, and there was like a a guy that was called Je- that was called uh, Jeff something, and he, he kept making Tetrises at some point, and the commenter uh, was like, "Boom, Tetris for Jeff! Boom, Tetris for Jeff!" And it, like it became a meme, and I've seen people with shirts like that said, "Boom, Tetris for Jeff." Uh, these commenters are are awesome, and they make the competition really worth wa- really worth watching because otherwise it's just two dudes playing Tetris. Even if it's impressive, you would get bored of it after a few minutes. Mm. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, Good commenters is probably the best thing that uh, can happen to esports, and um, it's, if the if the if the esports doesn't have good commentary, it's it's like boring as shit. Yeah, I I think it's um, it's really paramount to the enjoyment of anything that someone who knows a little bit more than you can explain stuff and in a way that doesn't come off as annoying or anything like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what that's why I like. Uh, professional sports because they usually like uh always focus on that rather than more like niche stuff where like speed running or something where it's commentationless or those like really sort of like in community games that haven't developed a real good sense of humor or like real good jokes about stuff you know like melee is fun to watch and that's not super professional like for mm-hmm. at least not for until like a couple years ago that's fun mm-hmm. to watch because the commentators yeah, have a really great sense of humor and the real uh, intimacy of the game itself, so that it's fun to watch, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Just gonna take a little break. Uh, I always take a little break, like a few minutes in the middle, so I can like uh, get some water and uh, stretch my legs. At break. How do y'all? Texas Lisa here. I'm the American one. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. 
There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything that you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I'm back. Hi, Mojito. The, uh, the, the channel, the YouTube channel, Neil Ciciarego. Oh, God. Um, that guy's a legend. Made Potter, yeah, he, he made Potter Puppet Pals, like, early YouTube days. Um, his mashups, I find them to be hilarious when not using funny songs because the message of one song is, like, almost in the complete different direction as the other one he's mashed it with, and he's, he's managed to make them fit in this really funny way. Um, like using Linkin Park, but putting all of the the lyrics over the top of a much much happier sounding song mm-hmm. uh, comes off as funny to me. Just because uh, my familiar familiarity with each song, f- completely separate parts of my like exploration. Mm-hmm. It's subversive, but like the nature of comedy yeah, itself yeah. doesn't allow like a single joke or like a certain concept to be consistently funny for. Um, the duration of a song like True, three yeah, minutes yeah. or something it's extremely difficult to make yeah. a song like funny like actually funny <laughs> you know it, it's just mm. not how comedy works it's possible i'm yeah. sure but i don't think anyone's truly done it and if they have it's uh, uh we already know about it what else did neil do what did he also do he did um ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny I remember that. Oh, that was him. Yeah, yeah. that was him. He's Damn. done a couple yeah. different things uh, all over the place, and that been he he's a le- mm-hmm. he's legendary. Um, he did that. Yeah. That was funny when I was a kid. He did pop higher Harry Potter puppet pals. You already mentioned that. Mm. He's um, the lead of. Oh uh, yeah, he, he, he's the guy who made the he, the guy What's who made the mysterious the, ticking noise. Yeah, he also did. What was the other thing? He's the lead of Lemon Demon. That's a band that has a consistent sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Lemon Lemon Demon was already huge. <laughs> uh, Demon. Yeah, Lem- Lemon Demon Lemon Demon was huge on, on Newgrounds Lemon Demon. before mm-hmm. before uh, YouTube even existed. I, I remember seeing the, their songs like on Newgrounds, like at the era of Salad Fingers and shit. Oh uh, God, don't remind me of also, that. <laughs> also, also Neil Cesarega, isn't that the guy who made the that comic on Tumblr when the yes. Little Mermaid had seven vagina? Seven vaginas. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> Eight legs, seven vaginas, baby. Oh, that was yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. That's Neil. Yeah. He's done a couple different things. He's made some short films that have a couple million views. Most of them are not based on his brand name, his name itself, and people going to that. It's usually caught on fire and become viral because of the way it is. He's probably one of the only online people consistently being able to make things viral out without yeah. leaning on his um, own name recognition. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the only other one, uh, the only other one I can think of is Casey Green. I think is his name. Casey Green. Uh, uh, I think, but like his comics are super famous, but he isn't. Um, Casey something. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. shake. I I uh, that name seems familiar. I'm sh- I, I'm sure you're gonna tell me some things that he's done, and I'm gonna know what you're talking about, but. Well, he's made the comics where there's a dog uh, drinking coffee in the place on fire, and he said, "This is fine." That guy, know. yeah, I know that. He made the the comics where uh, a guy uh, eats bees because to impress his son. That was super popular on 4chan uh, <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, he also made the comic of the uh, Simpsons thing, where but it's like really cursed. The cursed um, Simpsons. I've never. I've seen a couple things like that. I don't know what that. Yeah, there's a couple of people who were able to sort of break into that and make viral stuff. I wonder mm. what their secret is. I wonder how they learned that. Because mm. it seems to be pretty difficult to be able to do that in with any consistency. You know. Mm-hmm. I reckon. Yeah. Um, like like with the e meme itself, there's like some some weird counterintuitive thing to it. Like if you. 
if you if you don't even know what you're making, sometimes that's where the gold is gonna. Sometimes, be. if you just like throw shit at the wall, something is gonna stick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just that yeah. was pretty much the reason why that blog ever got successful. I just posted every day, sometimes twice a day, and I just threw shit at the wall, and a couple things just ended up sticking. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's the. If you want anyone who's listening who wants the secret to success. For, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. You just you can't know what you're it's doing. It's all it's all consistency. Um, getting out of your comfort zone. You just have to. You just have to do it every day. That's the secret. Only reason why I'm not more yes. successful, or why we're not. It, what separates people like us from people who have made it is just raw consistency and experimentation. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just do it. Every, that's. Uh, I don't remember who said that, but. Uh, a famous writer was asked how to be a good writer, and his answer was just write every day. And it's like, yeah, yeah. practice makes perfect. And it's like, just keep doing it, keep doing it. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's it. Oh, Dick Butt. You know Dick Butt? Dick Butt? Did he do Dick Butt? <laughs> Jesus. That was really um, the perfect thing that's to yell after a little bit of silence. Just, just sort of yeah. everyone laying low, <laughs> just Dick Butt. Yeah. yeah, you know that little drawing of a, a, a dick butt? Yeah. Uh, well, that's Casey, that's, yeah. that's Casey Green as well. Oh, now that I'm thinking about it, it does look like that yeah. dog with the house on fire. Huh. Yeah. And also, one of the Rage comics, uh, it's a guy who removes his sunglasses and says, Mother of God. Wait, that's him? <laughs> yeah, that's him. Damn. I didn't know he, can, yeah. he uh, contributed so much to meme culture. And it's crazy because this guy is uni- his youngest shit. Like I think he, he started as a as a teenager, uh, born in 1987. Is fucking younger than me. Really? Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I see green. Well, I'm only That's still in college thing. myself, so yeah, I started when I oh. was really young too. So. Oh yeah. While while we're on the subject, uh, earlier you said that you want to keep your private life as private as you uh, as possible. But uh, is it okay if I ask? What do you study? Um, yeah, I can. Uh, I'll just tell you if I'm not comfortable giving away details. But um, right okay. now, I'm th- I'm studying um, uh, business, and but I'm not really too interested in this specific major. So I'm probably going to switch to um, film. That's another one that I wanted to take up specifically. Huh. I think there's a lot of um, room in film for uh, humor and stuff and education, and that's what draws me to that. And also linguistics. So it's really between those oh. two right now. Yeah. I've expressed a couple of times in here my sort of uh, interest on like uh, the, the sources of phrases and etymologies and stuff. And uh, Yeah, that's really interesting. Cool. Mm-hmm. I find it interesting yes. and I think it's something I could uh, uh, enjoy as a uh, profession. I wonder if there's a way to link business, film... And etymology. Uh, I'm wrecking my yeah, brain. Yeah, content creation. There's definitely, yeah. Yeah, sure. That, yeah, Vsauce. There's definitely a way to do, um, to pair each of those separately, but together it's probably difficult. But if I ever get super popular and super consistent, it's probably going to be from uh, that trifecta, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, kind of like the um, Bill Wirtz, uh history uh, of japan but instead of history it's like uh, linguistics yeah exactly that's definitely something that i've thought about doing but i'm studying you know i'm busy this summer i'm gonna be uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah releasing more youtube videos and twitch streaming i'm gonna see if i what i can do with that but it's hard to cons- keep a consistent schedule uh for someone like uh, me you know yeah uh if i yeah i struggle if i may give an uh, a little word of advice Recently, Facebook is becoming huge for uh, videos and live streaming. I would uh, I would advise you to tr- at least try streaming on Facebook instead of Twitch because it's it's uh, it's amazing. Would I you, mean, in my opinion, what would you really recommend that? Because I would probably take that up. I never considered Facebook, but I know that they're breaking into YouTube and Twitch's uh, monopoly on uh, streaming and videos. I mean, I'm not saying it's the best, but I've been really positively impressed by Facebook videos and Facebook streaming. The the numbers that you can get and uh, the the quality of the streams surprised me in a very positive way. 
And uh, well, I've used I used to stream on Twitch for a while, and now I stream exclusively on Facebook because I, I just think it's better. Your mileage may vary; it's probably not for everyone, but I would I at least advise you to try. Yeah, I'm uh, not sure. I would definitely I'm definitely going to consider it. I'm looking into it for sure now that you've mentioned that specifically. But I know that a lot of my um, I guess you could say the demographic of my market isn't on Facebook. Like young people really don't uh, lurk around on Facebook uh, very often, you know. They usually uh, most of my friends are off Facebook, and even my acquaintances are usually just posting generic sort of uh, uh, sort of life stuff from Facebook and using it to connect with their uh, friends in real life, rather than using it as like a, a social media platform for uh, memes and videos and entertainment in that same way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know my dad's on Facebook all the time, so I, I hear about stuff <laughs> like that, but still. Yeah. I almost forgot to ask, but here's a really important question that we ask all of our guests. What is your favorite meme of the moment? Of, like, today? <laughs> Let's say of 2020. Of 2020. That's a good one. Uh, not to sound generic, uh, there's a couple <laughs> options. I don't think about it in terms of like um, what's my favorite meme per se. I like the Doge memes; those are getting pretty good. I, I like where that's heading. But I think my favorite meme right now are those political compass memes, the ones where they associate like your certain like. Oh yeah. I'm a pretty yeah. political person, uh, personally. Yeah, they're, I, they're enduring. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, yeah, the yeah, nuance yeah, yeah. that you can find, both the seriousness and the lightheartedness that you that mix together when you yeah. use those. Um, certain political memes and stuff and the association they're kind of 4chan -y, and um, sometimes they err a little bit on the uh, questionable side as far as um, ethical terms go but it's sort of the <laughs> it's it's sort of the edginess that I kind of enjoy uh, watching you know uh, they're great yeah it's sort of yeah. replaced it, it, it's like the same uh, as like the filthy Frank stuff you know how people were entertained by him just being Uh, extremely vulgar and offensive. It's mm -hmm. it's sort of like the more adult, mature version of that. I yeah. would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my favorite meme of the moment yeah, is the probably right. those political compass memes, and maybe the Doge memes. But I have plenty more memes that I uh, that aren't my favorite that I hope uh, go away at some point. You know, this isn't a yeah. great time for meme culture. Everyone's focused on the coronavirus and like protests and stuff. Uh-huh. Everything's yeah. so topical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my news feed turned really like just crappy for a little while, actually. It's so dry. Just, Everyone just wants to talk about if yeah. people aren't talking about the uh the Black Lives Matter protests, and not to say that that doesn't matter, but if you're not talking about that or coronavirus, it's not gonna get on news. I just think Yeah. Yeah, it's not I don't think it's healthy as far as uh informing people goes, just to focus on the the two biggest things exclusively. You know, very mm -hmm. true. Very. True. Yeah, I, I really feel that. Yeah, I'm uh, I've been sick of hearing about those for uh, for a while, especially that everyone's an expert now and everyone's posting like bullshit. Yeah. Uh, people who uh, like burn 5G towers because they think they they spread coronavirus. Oh, my God. And, uh, all 5G the, uh, all towers. I'll say this, though. The 5G memes are funny. <laughs> I'll give you that. And I don't think too many people legitimately believe that 5G is, like, uh, harmful. But, you know, unfortunately, yeah, there's a couple to do. It's a scapegoat. Yeah, totally. It's a scapegoat. And, uh, yeah, and all teenage shitheads uh, posting, like, black squares on Instagram. And, like, oh, uh, my God. Think that, that they, <laughs> it, makes, it makes them activists. I mean. Yeah, you're not really uh, changing the world by one Instagram post, you know. It's. It's virtue signaling. It, vir it oh god, it is virtue signaling. It's nothing else. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, it's a placeholder for actual like action. Yeah, it's just it's frustrating. If you feel so strongly about a certain political movement, you really have to do more than just post every once in a while about it. You know, like you really got to get more involved uh, if you really want to make a difference. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of that. Um, I saw a documentary on the Connie 2012. Uh, yeah, that was meme, crazy. Meme. I watched that too. 
yeah meme movement thing and uh, there were a lot of people who like liked the Facebook page that was kind of the, the hub to that and posted messages and uh, a year after or two years after I don't remember but someone make, made a kind of like a documentary and research into that movement and uh, he tried to see how many people donated money or did an actual action 99.8 percent of people did not do anything or donate money or contribute in any way yeah. uh, except for like just posting about it and uh putting like a, a filter on their Facebook page or shit like this you know yeah it's unfortunate that so many people are so uh, they have such a facade about activism you know they're not really when they promote something they're pretty uh, benign to the actual uh, event itself you know they're not moved mm -hmm. to like change anything even in and I mean that's worse because that was in Africa And in the Western world, we never really think about that country, that whole region, not country, but anything about Africa, we don't think about too much. And it's not in our minds and we don't really, uh, it's not something we uh, really like to yeah, consider. Yeah, yeah. But even when but it's, it's not even when it's the Black Lives Matter protest and, and here in America, that is the biggest thing ever. And there's plenty, everyone, there's, I mean, there's a lots of black people. I have plenty of black friends. When it's something that prevalent, you'd be surprised at how people are still so, you know, inactive uh, outside of the bare minimum of just like reposting stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's really, yeah, it's a lot of taking positions publicly for a facade for just for your image. It's an image thing. And it and yeah, it's not because it's foreign. I, I, there's a great example for me. It was like uh, a few years ago, I think it was in 2016, there were like uh, Islamist attacks uh, in, in, in Paris. We heard about and those. It was, yeah. like, it was like a block away from my house. It was like really close to where I live. Really? And when I got, and yeah, and when I got out of my apartment to uh, go to work, I walked in front of the, 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 the scene of the murders like every day. Uh, and I still fucking hated all the people who were like pray for Paris on Tumblr, on uh, Facebook and Instagram and, and shit and who were like putting French flag filters. Yeah, that, uh, those were ridiculous, in, I think. It's... Yeah, it's it's not because it's foreign because every even the time where it, where it happened a block away from my house literally I, I I hated it. Perhaps I hated it even more because like it, it felt <laughs> really uh um I mean, I don't know, I, I really yeah, I sort really of disingenuous, absolutely right? shitty. Yeah. What? Like like it was just I can't stand virtue signaling. And I've gotten yeah, same. I'm more tolerant of it because I spent so many years on Tumblr which is just uh, an absolute epicenter of sort of this toxic uh, ultimate virtue signaling, just sort of finding the most, uh, the, the, the kinds of things that you could just get behind to give yourself sort of, look at me, look how uh, nice I am sort of points, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. It's, uh, it's, it's really annoying. Every time I see a white guy say Black Lives Matter, I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I, I don't feel uh, the same way specifically just because I know the nuance of the situation. And I know that a lot of uh -huh. white people, I mean, there's plenty of white people that just have black friends and they just agree that white, the black, black, black lives matter. You yeah, know? maybe I just just the whole idea of being an ally is kind of repugnant to me. Uh, I, exactly. I hate that uh, that thought, that concept. It's like it's like uh, yeah, I, I don't like it. It's it's hard to explain why, but I really do not like it. When I see a, a black guy c complain because he got uh, uh, he's a, he was a victim of police brutality, and then he's saying Black Lives Matters. Like yeah, okay, that's good. That's very I'm genuine. I'm against yeah. that, and I'm very not uh, that like police brutality and police officers abusing their power uh, is a huge problem especially when they are not accountable for it and when they face no consequences mm -hmm. and i'm not like on the side of cops i don't want people to believe that no. but yeah a lot of time when i see people say stuff like black lives matter on facebook and shit i'm like shut the fuck up yeah uh it, you know it's like it's that yeah and there's a lot of stuff like when the guys uh burned like a police station i was like yeah Okay, that makes sense. And then when the people like uh, riot and dis and destroy small businesses and start looting, like what the fuck? Yeah, it's, that's that's repugnant. Like, I don't think. Uh, yeah. And if you yeah, look yeah. at videos and stuff of that, the people who are looting stores and they're like, like the ones that were destroying the Target, the ones that were just breaking windows down like downtown areas of cities, they're mostly not black. Like they're mostly just white kids yeah. who are exploiting oh, see, this chaos of did the situation. You see, did you see who got caught and was arrested for looting? Who? Jake Paul. 
No. Wait. <laughs> are you fucking? Yeah, here? yeah. No yeah, fucking yeah, cause, way. That's so yeah, something yeah, you two, would do. Yeah, yeah. Two or three days ago. Wow. Yeah, that's the <laughs> that's the poster child of white people taking advantage of a situation. That's pretty yeah, much Jake yeah, Paul's yeah, forte. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, but it's really it's really like it's pretty people virtue signaling is also taking advantage of a situation. People think, oh yeah, but I'm raising awareness for the cause. No, you're not. You're just being an asshole and it's just an e- e- echo chamber. People who don't know what you're talking about are not gonna be interested, and people who already know that you're talking about are gonna like give you clout and you just it's a circle jerk. Exactly. And it's it doesn't it doesn't achieve anything. Just acknowledging like, a certain situation doesn't mean that you're doing anything to help it. I mean, I yeah. think I think it's rather um, uh, innocuous just to say Black Lives Matter on Facebook, but like still not go out and protest or anything because some people are busy. They got lives to attend to, even if the coronavirus, you know, makes people, you know, not have uh, employment right now. I think it's still fine to, you know, post black squares, you know, it doesn't really achieve anything, but it's sort of, you know, you saying a certain movement. If you take it too far, it gets annoying, but if it's just you yeah, mobilizing support just... online, it's fine. One thing I do think, though, is that if you're a white person and you're looting stores, not even just like small businesses, but even big businesses where people are turning a blind eye to, if you're looting mm-hmm. that because of the Black Lives Matter movement, you're not doing it because black people are you know, being brutalized by police. You're doing it because you just want to do it. You're taking advantage yeah. of the chaos of the situation. You just don't you don't give a shit about uh, black people. Like, you just don't. Very, you yeah, wouldn't do that. Very true. You wouldn't do that if you didn't if you cared because you know that that shit is gonna really damage the movement. It makes it look bad. It ruins. Yeah, the very image. true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's and, uh, the. It's it's just like people posting black squares on Instagram. They don't do it to support. A, <laughs> they don't do it to support a cause. They do it to get likes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, and, and try to you know. It's it's fishing for clout, really. That's what it is, and, and nothing else. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really a problem of uh, black and white mentality, pun intended a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. It, it, it's just like this movement of Black Lives Matter reminds me a lot of something that happened when I was a kid, uh, which was uh, when them planes uh, flew into them towers, like in um, yeah, nine uh, eleven. In the USA, yeah, yeah, yeah. The response and the the way people talk about it is very similar. Uh, when I was a kid, it was uh, 9/11, never forget. Now it's Black Lives Matter, but it's the same kind of discourse. It's the same sort of. of I mean, both things stem from tragic events, like the murder of George Floyd should not yeah. have happened. It's terrible. The people who flew the planes into the towers, they're terrible people. Of course, those things are obvious, but. People just take advantage of the situations to make themselves seem, you know, more reputable, more popular. It's disgusting, I think. It's disingenuous. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Even some people who are, like, going out and, act like, actively protesting and stuff, many of those people, too many, not all of them, but too many of them are only doing it for the clout to say that they're actually participating in the movement. Uh, Too many people. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and they get a high from that, a little... A little feeling of being on the right side of things. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah. Uh, I don't, yeah, yeah. I can't support that. I just can't. Oh yeah, it's it's stinky. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's gross. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, it does bolster the numbers and it does make a change. So I don't actively, you know, like despise that. But you know, it is sort of uh, a repugnant sort of personality, a, a really bad reason to be an activist. Yeah. 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 Absolutely agree, yeah. Yeah. Hey, when we're talking about this, what is your most hated meme? A meme that you really dislike? The most hated meme? Oh, yeah. There's a couple of... There's... Or, I think... I don't know. Some of... There's a couple... I think my most hated memes are some of the racist 4chan memes, those poll memes. Sometimes they're kind of yeah, funny same. because they're said ironically, but sometimes I see them yeah. from some of my more uh, suspicious friends... Mm-hmm. You know, they'll post stuff that's just not really funny. They're just feeding it to conspiracy theories and they don't seem to, yeah. they don't have the irony behind yeah, that. I can't yeah, stand yeah, those. They get a bit of a thrill yeah. from a, um, it being just a really awful. If you don't treat that with the right amount joke. of like, uh, uh, if you treat that with too much seriousness, it's just sort of damaging to the, uh, yeah. to culture. Cause you, it, 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 it damages mm-hmm. to yourself because you, you seem like you support that type of thing. You know, 
Very true. Yes, yes, yes. It's unfortunate. There's a lot of memes line like this. That. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, it, it just reminded me of uh, a meme that's not not a really political, but similar to what you're talking about. It's like the the roasty meme. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's it, it started uh, as a joke that uh, if girls have a lot of sex with the ver- with a lot of different partners, then their uh, their pus- pussy looks like roast beef. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> of course, that's of course that's not how it works. No. It's completely different from reality. But so uh, so it's a funny meme. I like it as a meme. It's a funny joke. The problem is that a lot of people took that seriously and started using yeah. it and start yeah. Uh, and a lot of people who have never really uh, yeah. been educated on that kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. too many uh, people. Too many people. I think. I mean, a lot of those incel memes <laughs> are. A lot of those incel memes I think are kind of funny. But I think they're sort of damaging to young men who are just who get a lot of their like education yeah. about they're on the internet too much and they get their most of their like um, social experience and their sex education from the internet. And if you're exposed to too much of that sort of like parody, then you're not going to know that that's not how things work. Yeah, and it's, it's basically yeah. pose law. Yeah, the popularization of those funny, stupid incel memes. I think it's contributing to the uh, phenomena itself, uh, in my personal Maybe. opinion. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's serious enough that we should like you know condemn it. But you know, I think we ought to be aware that certainly some people are vulnerable to uh, that type of thing. You know, people will take pretexts for anything, and they will take a, a thing if it validates something that they already have inside. But they will they will take anything as a pretext. It's just like. Uh, when people um, started murdering uh, other ones and going to war and shit in the name of Jesus and and the Bible, uh, even if in the Bible it says you shall not kill, anyone who has a uh, urge and a, a lust and a thirst for like murder and violence and stuff will take any pretext to do his misdeeds. And it completely connects to what we were saying, like the, the people who destroy shit and do looting in the name of Black Lives Matter. It's the same thing. They, they don't believe in the movement. They're not there for the cause. They're there for their own ass. And uh, they destroy shit, and that's all they, they want. Uh, it's 99.9% of people who call, them, who call themselves Antifa. Uh, it's the same. They don't believe in the cause. They just want to burn shit. We try to blame stuff on this and that, on that person who was, like, uh, violent because he listened to Marilyn Manson. This uh, guy was violent because he uh, plays violent video games. But, no, people are fucked. Some mm-hmm. people are fucked. And they will try to find meaning uh, and patterns in anything. There was even like this... Uh, like Markiplier's face on Lord <laughs> Yeah, yeah. People will really dig into <laughs> that. A lot of below it. Yeah, yeah I'm sure that like meme this, uh, has ruined a couple of people's senses of humor. Yeah, that's damaging to society. We, we need to purge <laughs> e-memes off the internet entirely. So yeah, people will take anything, uh, whether it's like Mein Kampf or something completely, uh, you know, innocuous. There was like this Mexican drug lord uh, who was like a huge uh, criminal. He was also a huge fan of Dora the Explorer and uh, he had a... All the all, all the kind of mystique around, yeah, and even his car was like he had Dora the Explorer on the uh, painting on his car and shit like this. I mean, people will take anything. People will take anything uh, to and escalate it. I'm sure there are serial killers who became serial killers because they were watching like Hello Kitty and uh, they heard a voice in their head. Uh, yeah, that but said, those type of people. Hello Kitty wants you to kill. Yeah, I think I'm not. When I said that thing about the incel memes, I wasn't trying to be like one of those boomers that's like, uh, rock and roll is going to destroy the minds of our generation, you know? Uh, yeah, like, yeah. I, but it's sort of like that, but I, I, I'm not really, I think it's sort of the type of thing that some people who are already vulnerable to that sort of thing um, need, uh, can fall suit to incel culture, um, unironically. Mm-hmm. And that's something. Yeah, the 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 pipeline effect. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know if the, how legitimate the, the that is, but there's definitely some people who start um, almost sort of normal, but are still like there's something about their personality that makes them susceptible to things like that, and then they get let down that yeah. path. I don't think that's something that we as a yeah, culture the algorithm need to like. Takes them there as well. Yeah, that's not something Maybe. I think that like people need to be aware of as far as like a culture goes. 
but I do think it's something that like maybe uh, like a mental health profession um, should look into. Yeah. It's something oh, that we all have to yes. be aware of. Yeah. yeah, definitely yes. Yeah, some yeah, of these yeah, some of these me- uh, these yeah. uh, incels definitely need some therapy or something. You know, all most of them. <gasps> poor guys. I think probably the perfect. Or just a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jordan Peterson yeah, has yeah, definitely yeah. saved some incels. I know that because oh yeah, that man just gives mm. like hard dad advice. You know, I think yeah. that also radicalized some incels. Yeah, <laughs> what Jordan Peterson yeah. just made them more confident in there. Yeah, maybe. I think pro. Yeah, yeah. Or at least the first step. He's a pretty wise man, though. He's not. He's definitely. He's not even really like super like right wing or anything. But he's definitely the first Mm -hmm. stone in a path towards uh, something a bit more sinister. You know. Probably, yeah. 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 I I think probably a great example of that is the degenerate meme. Mm. Uh, Mm. When I like for a really long time, nobody used that word. And uh, it became kind of popular and uh, and and funny in the meme world a few ye- a few years ago, probably like by four chance Paul uh, mm-hmm. board. And uh, yeah, degenerate is is a is a reference to the Nazis. It's a it's a word that the Nazis used to qualify everything that they didn't like. Uh, they would say, "Oh, this is uh, this is not good. This is degenerate." Uh, I don't remember how they say in German, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's very much a, a Nazi thing. So when people uh, did it like as a as a Nazi joke, it's funny because I mean, in my opinion, if you understand uh, where it comes from. Uh, it's it's funny. Uh, if you understand that then, it's not something that you should be uh, thought thinking of as good, and it's something that yeah. you're supposed to not like, then it's okay. But if you're exactly, but it's it, the, yeah. If you don't treat it with that sort of irony, it's it can make people who agree with that sort of thing think that there's bigger numbers than there actually are. I honestly suspect yeah, that most yeah, people yeah. on like the poll board on 4chan are like normal right leaning, maybe just like a bit more far right. But I don't think the majority of them are like Nazis or like yeah, ethnic superior, so like people who believe oh, yeah, in sure. ethnic superiority or that those Jewish conspiracies. I think most of them just think it's a yeah, fun yeah, joke yeah. or something, and they don't care about the consequences of uh, putting mm, forth. Sure, like I mean, yeah, most of them are probably LARPers or uh, people who are just here for just there for for the meme. There's definitely people uh, who seriously believe that stuff, whether or not they came there believing it or they came out like they went there and got converted. Yeah, sure. But there's definitely yeah, it's, most it's, of them are definitely LARPers. But it's like let's say it's like Breaking Bad, you know? Uh, people who think that uh, uh, Walter White slash Heisenberg is like uh, an, a model, a role model, and they should identify to him, they completely oh, miss yeah, the point. Start, yeah, selling math. Yeah, yeah. He, and I think the word degenerate is the same thing. It's funny if it's ironic. But you're not supposed to like it for real, or, or you're you're like the cuck of the joke. Uh, if you do, because it's <laughs> it's funny because it's ironic. It's funny because it's uh, uh, a little bit offensive because mm-hmm. it's reference to Nazism and stuff. And it's like like a, a counter example, just like yeah, just like Heisenberg in Breaking Bad or like uh, Rick Sanchez in Rick and Morty. Yeah. You're not supposed you're not to supposed to identify models. with those people. They're supposed to be. Uh, like people with very negative flaws. Unfor- yeah, yeah. It, it, I think the framing, I watched all of Breaking Bad and I appreciate that they ended up wrapping up the show by giving Walter exactly what he deserved. Not to spoil anything, yeah. but you know, <laughs> they sort of, I think they quelled the sort of um, people who identified with Walter in a way that was positive, who thought that that sort of behavior was being reinforced. I think they ended up concluding by making sure that he, um, the audience knew not to give away too much, but that the audience knew that he wasn't um, a good person. You know, I think that's the responsibility yeah. that yeah. certain pieces of media need to take when they do those sorts of um, when they get popular and they do sorts of uh, uh, archetypes that some people might not take seriously. If you don't um, understand yeah. the sort of nuance in a situation, you can get misinterpreted and you can take things the wrong way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But people will take any pretext. Remember Charles Manson. Uh, he mm-hmm. said that uh, he was inspired to kill by the the Beatles. The, 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 so mm-hmm. it's yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure most people are 
are perfectly um, as unmurderous before and after the Beatles, you know? <laughs> I feel like, well, I think the Beatles have made less people murderous because all they do is, you know, promote like LSD and shit. You don't murder people when you're high. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. So that true, was, true. that was definitely but- Manson's fault, you know? Don't pin it on the Beatles, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's and uh, the word degenerate uh, originally was like a, a very ironic thing to say. And then people started uh, saying it in earnest. And now, recently, it has... It, it's being used by everyone, and I'm not sure I like that uh, today. It's a very serious. Today, it's I, very serious. Yeah, I never hear the people use degenerate, and I never interpret it as meaning something like ironic. It's always used unironically mm. whenever I hear about it, which is super unfortunate because it's not. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. The word itself doesn't foster a sort of um, a good worldview, in my opinion. You know. Yeah, but uh, re- but well, this very morning. I was watching YouTube. I was watching a, a, a cooking channel called Bon Appetit. I love that channel. And uh, it's like probably the most innocuous and wholesome channel uh, uh, that you can think of. And there was like one of the chefs who said something uh, like, uh, oh, yeah, no, I don't, uh, I don't put uh, green bell peppers in my omelette. I'm not a, de- I'm not a degenerate. And uh, oh uh, it, it didn't feel good to hear that. It felt like it was uh, being, oh. hit, being hit by a nasty curveball. Uh, didn't like it. It's, it's like unfortunate. It's, it's, be- it's unfortunate that yeah. you can't even really use it ironically because it's so it's so well known to be used by some people very seriously that if you just use mm-hmm. it to be sort of extreme and edgy, people don't take it the right way. Yeah, that's the problem with like mm-hmm. people who say slurs all the time. You know what I mean? No, you can't really mm-hmm. trust that people would, um, know you're not serious. Would you say people who? Eat pizza with pineapple on it, degenerate? <laughs> or is, is there like, are there no opportunities for the de- degenerate? Well, my dad um, eats pineapple once, on pizza, once, once so that was pretty, that was pretty <laughs> tough when I was uh, growing up. Uh, this was rhetorical. I know. It just, I didn't really no, I, mean it. <laughs> I'm not offended. Just because of my pe- pineapple on pizza heritage is involved doesn't mean I understand. <laughs> yeah. I have a very strong uh, history of that uh, disgusting Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> Yeah. Fruit, fruit on 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 tomato paste. I gotta be honest with bread. you guys. If you have never tried pineapple on pizza, you should do it. Pineapple and ham, Hawaiian pizza, because the pineapple and the ham go together very well. You have to do it. Well, you have to try it. Well, well, well. <laughs> You'll be very surprised. I, I've tried do it. I need heritage. <laughs> I've tried it a few times. Not recently, because I, I became a vegetarian some years ago. So no ham for me. But oh, um, good for you. I. I I tried a few times, and uh, <laughs> it's true that the pineapple goes really well with the ham, and it also kind of goes well with the tomato sauce. But I thought that the pineapple completely clashed with the mozzarella. Mm. It depends. Pi- it depends pineapp- on the type of pizza. I think in America it's better because America uses different types of cheeses. Like where, maybe where I live in America, there's a lot. I'm also Italian myself, and there's a lot of Italian American heritage and italian american mm-hmm. people so um basically best pizza in the world where i'm at and people don't you don't really don't find pineapple on pizza here because it's more the, the culture of that cuisine is more um i guess traditional i want to say so that's not something you find a lot but um mm. oh fuck where was i going with this i totally lost my pace so you can buy tinned pineapple and make and sort of make your own amendment mm-hmm yeah, it might not be as good. I don't know if you're supposed to cook the pineapple, though. I don't know. I don't know how pineapple and pizza works. I'm not a... I, don't, I never made a pizza in my life. <laughs> yeah, you should cook it. But when it's going in the, in the pizza in the oven, it's going to be cooked. Yeah. It's an overwhelming flavor, so I don't blame people. I think tomato itself is an overwhelming flavor, if I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, so yeah. I think... I don't know. Not that I'm a very... I'm not Gordon Ramsay or anything, but I kind of understand people who think it's disgusting. Because it is a, it's very different from regular pizza. Yeah, I really love the white pizza. A, mm, white pizza is good. Yeah. Yeah. I went to Italy once, and they had all different. Th- the pizza culture in Italy is different. Obviously, it's way more complex. And I had white pizza there with like their own sort of like they had like tomatoes, like not tomatoes, but like potatoes as toppings and all different huh. types of things. And that was delicious. It, it was very interesting. White pizza, yeah, I enjoy I tr- in America too. 
I, I, I tried a white pizza once, like super simple. It was just pizza dough. And on top, there was like olive oil and uh, oregano and basil. Mm-hmm. That was it. It was great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I think, I think white pizza is sometimes better than uh, like regular pizza with tomato sauce. Because if you don't, it, the, the key yeah. to a good pizza is that tomato sauce. And if it's shit, then it, it's going to taste like shit. But if it's just very true, I completely agree. Yes. If it's that, like, I can't order uh, real pizza from like one of those like um, fast food pizza places, like Pizza Hut, Domino's, because the sauce is always terrible. But you can get a white yeah. pizza, and that shit's pretty good. You can't fuck up melting melted cheese on bread, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Mm. Yeah. But a little uh, bit of garlic. I I bet if I went to Hawaii mm. and you got that Hawaiian pizza there. You got that. I think they know how to do it. I think they would convert um, any of the non-believers, you know? Mm. Mm. I mean, Hawaiian pizza was not invented in Hawaii. I don't know if you know the story. Oh, really? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was invented in, I think, um, Probably California Florida? some shit. But it was invented, I think, in Florida by a Greek immigrant. And he called it Hawaiian pizza because he used um, canned uh, Spam, pineapple. Spam, right? That was that w- that came from Hawaii, mm. uh, but but actually, uh, to invent the pizza, he uh, was inspired by Chinese cuisine and like the sweet and sour uh, stuff. Really? So yeah, so he called it Hawaii because there was like Hawaii uh, written on the pineapple cans mm. that he used to create to create the recipe. It it's not linked to Hawaii in any other way. Well, ham um, and yeah, well, pineapples are about the two most Hawaiian foods that you can find. So I'm not, I'm surprised it wasn't from there, but. It makes sense where it got its namesake from. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but glazed glazed ham with fruits is like super traditional in Europe. Uh, we all have recipes in pretty much all the countries. Um, it, there is a very there is a very similar uh, recipe here in France, where it's um, it's uh, with prunes. Prunes. Like, gr- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like dried dried plums with uh cooked like uh, in the oven with with um uh, ham or um some kind of pork uh that's cut. interesting uh, i think european roast. food culture especially more mediterranean is so much more complex than american it's it's about as gross as you think it is to be honest it's pretty mm-hmm. yeah uh, if you ever wonder why americans are so fat um you know it really is mcdonald's's fault there's it, you everything you've heard is true <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like are are fat people like like unicorns in France? Because I feel like you guys have. Too, I guess you guys are too sophisticated with your food or something. You know, <laughs> we're not really sophisticated. Well, it's not super kind of sophisticated. A... You guys eat snails, so there's a limit. But still, <laughs> French is the language of the kitchen. Mm. It is. Yeah. 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 Uh, um. I don't know about language of love, but yeah, definitely language of the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of uh, kitchen terms that all around the world are like in French. The word chef, for example, is French yeah. for uh, for like chief, mm-hmm. and um, and it it came to to be because in the beginning, uh, kitchens were organized exactly like in the armies, and uh, chef is what we, we, we you would call a sergeant. Mm, uh, really? In the in the yeah in the military. Yes, yes, basically the same thing. I thought it so, had something uh, in common with the English chief. But now I know, yeah, that's definitely the origin of that. Huh. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, and there's a lot of stuff like the, the brazy or, or blanche, mm. like when you blanche vegetables. And uh, there, there's a lot of stuff like this. Julien. Exactly. Julien is uh, also one of those. Um, the, there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's more diversity uh, than people uh, imagine, I think, because if you compare the, the 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 cuisine of the north of France with the cuisine of the south, it's like completely different. Yeah, I know. Like, I've heard it's very almost, different. Yeah, almost nothing in common. And uh, yeah, yeah, because the south and is the, more the, Mediterranean. The, it's way more similar with like Spanish and Italian, right? But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the north is so it's that's probably the most unique in, in all of Europe, I, from what I know. The the very little. Yeah. Yeah, I need to visit France at some point. You know, Paris or There's something. A, well, uh, yeah, I remember seeing a, a diagram uh, recently, a, a, a map, uh, and uh, there was like tomato Europe and potato Europe. Oh, I've seen that tomato. too. Yeah. Yeah, 
and the line cuts France right in the middle, and it's very, very true. Mm. The, the south of France is all about tomatoes and olive oil. The north is all about potatoes and butter. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then there are a lot of uh, a specific stuff to the regions, like the the crepes were very specific of the of the west of the France. You guys have crabs uh, in France. Well, they were invented in, in, in France. Well, I I don't think you guys invented the the species, but I'm sure you guys. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I might have, nah. I might have mispronounced, uh, but it's kind of like a, a pancake. Yes, today, right? A, like a pancake, but thinner and larger. Oh, 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 um, crepes. That's the English. That's I think that's how you say it in English, right? Is that what you're trying to say? So, yeah, crepes. You said crabs, like, like the crustacean. <laughs> is yeah uh, sometimes I, it's hard for me to figure out the pronunciation if it's not a word that i've heard you can probably uh, pronounce it in it. french uh, like the french yeah. way in english and we'll probably understand. i think that's what i did yes there's so yeah, many yeah. english loan words that come from french that most people will mm -hmm. understand you're trying to say something like that yeah especially with food just pronounce it the way french people pronounce it you know <laughs> yeah yeah and uh and yeah one of the funniest thing things uh, is like we have uh, something that is very common, uh, a dish, especially for like occasions like uh, Christmas or stuff like this. That it's it's the plateau de fruits de mer. It's called, and it's basically a bunch of seafood on a platter of ice, and then you eat it with uh, lemon juice or mayonnaise. Mm. And uh, and curiously, it was invented in uh, the region of Alsace, which is like the mo one of the most landlocked region. Of France, it's very, um, very far from any seas. So, really, uh, it's it's kind of an oddity. Yeah, interesting. That's, I've never uh, I've never heard of that the region or the food or anything. Hmm. Well, you can see uh, if you if you've watched uh, a movie called uh, oh, Fuck, what is what is it called? Mister Bean on Holiday, Mister Bean's Vacation. I've never <laughs> seen that, but I've heard of it. I know that was a classic. Uh, and, it, uh, I was he, too old. I was too young for that. <laughs> you can see you can see him eating one of those, uh, like in the beginning of the movie. Mm. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a great movie. It's like uh, I've I've watched uh, the Mr. Bean movies, and like the first one is like not very good, not very funny. But this, I think, this one is like the second, and it's much better. Mm. I really liked it. Yeah, I've seen that one. I I. I I like that. I've I've seen clips of Mr. Bean, but I've never really sat down and watched the whole uh, segment, you know. But yeah, I appreciate that kind of comedy. I, I think there should be more of it. It's something I wanted to innovate if I ever become a if I ever really go down the path of a filmmaker. That's definitely would be an inspiration I would draw from things like that. Oh, yeah. Physical comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I think it was overplayed yeah. for a while, but I think you can make a resurgence now. I think people are too tired of the yeah. the faux sophistication of like modern Hollywood and the actiony sort of version of it, you know. Well, and, and um, Charlie Chaplin's like um, the great diplomat. Oh, sorry, the great dictator. Mm. My bad. Mm -hmm. um, that's like a very politically apt movie that apparently like Hitler saw as a fan of Charlie Chaplin and actually like shed a tear. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um, as fuck like but yeah. it's a lot of slapsticky comedy oh, yeah. like so there is actually quite some depth well yeah possible with especially it. i mean it's definitely innovative i i forget how much of it i've seen but it's definitely innovative for a movie of that era not to just be so you know sort of funny in that like slapstick sort of way but to be so politically motivated to be so outspoken yeah yeah mm. yeah yeah i think probably the most uh, innovative and the most politically charged of all the Chaplin movies is Modern Times. It's uh, never seen that one. What's well, it about? It's it's uh, it's about you know um, the Industrial Revolution and uh, uh, capitalism and mm -hmm. and all that. And it's like it's still it's not only really funny and also it was one of the first uh, non-silent movies with uh, actors that had actually lines uh so it was really ahead of its time in many many respects and it's still kind of really relevant uh as of today and um i think everyone can appreciate it uh really the 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 the, the, the great dictator is like a good movie but yeah it, it has a lot of slapstick like the scene uh where hitler and mussolini just 
keep uh, throwing spaghettis at each other for like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But slapstick, I think it's probably coming back somehow. Um, and I think probably one of the things that made it popular again is the Eric Andre show. Yes. I mean, right. oh, when it's you legendary. see Eric Andre come in, oh, like, I love Eric des- Andre. destroying the whole set. That's the first time I saw these, I was like mind blown. How Completely stark is blown. that, man? Oh, I love that guy. He's gonna he's gonna do great things. Uh, he already has, Probably, but yeah. still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. He's a funny dude. He he just started getting big in the United States like a year or two ago, and now he's gonna have to cancel the show. A lot of the humor is based that Eric Andre does is based off the fact that people don't know what to expect. Uh, blindsiding the yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. But now he's too popular, so he has to end it soon. Yeah, I, to be perfectly honest, I don't think it's a bad thing because um, the the more recent stuff was, in my opinion, not quite as good as season one and two. Oh yeah, uh, season th- season three was also pretty good. Season four uh, was a big disappointment in my opinion. I, I, season what? I, yeah, I agree with that. It, it's I mean, it's just difficult when you actually get that popular to maintain that. I mean, it's difficult in the first place just to have a show be consistently good once you get into the fourth season of something. You know, when you work on a project like that yeah. for so many years, you're bound to get some sort of uh, uh, backburn. You can tell there's yes, that much yes. passion. Sasha, Sasha Baron Cohen with his characters. Oh yeah, gets harder for him, but he's managed to start dipping into all of the the costumes and masks and stuff. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, just well, think that's what that. I think Eric Andre is going to be less influential himself and more just like influencing people who will go on to do greater things. There's a whole generation my age that's going to definitely uh, innovate upon that sort of format that he laid out. Yeah, yeah. I I, um, I, I remember being a little surprised recently uh, when... I, do you know who Review Bra is? Uh, yes, I know Review Bra. Uh, the, so uh, for the people who are listening and don't know, he's a young guy who's always wearing suits uh, that kind of look like uh, suits from uh, the flapper era. <laughs> And uh, and zoot suits and uh, he like his um, he's a YouTuber who is like a food reviewer and who always reviews like uh, fast food most of the time like stuff for McDonald's or stuff like this yeah. you know KFC etc Domino's Pizza and um, also sometimes he does uh, some different kind of review I remember one of um, I think it was the first video I saw of him when he was reviewing. Um, best value uh spring water versus best value purified water and uh <laughs> he was like pouring them uh into a, like a, a wine glass and uh making like very detailed uh, uh recollections uh of um what they tasted like or didn't taste like <laughs> so uh and i was very surprised uh, to learn recently that uh, his favorite show is the eric andre show he said that he was a fan on really? some video and uh, yeah i didn't expect that because in terms of personality they're very different it's oh uh, God, it was kind of an, the opposite it, it ends was, of the planet yeah but now that i've learned that i would like i would pay a lot of money to see review bra do uh eric andre type of show oh my god really that would that would be incredible i that would be that would be amazing i would watch that in a heartbeat someone if he got a tv show like on adult swim oh my god yeah he's ripe for the picking i'm surprised something hasn't happened yet with how big he's getting oh yeah 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 yeah. it's just i think it's a sort of it's a sort of niche sense of humor just being so sort of clean and so like innocent almost and just doing Mm -hmm. A very sort of popular but like bland stuff. That's something that I think is going to uh, be a theme in the nineteen twenty in the twenty twenties. You know, as far as meme yeah. culture is, if there is one, yeah, a move towards that sort of thing. Like in my opinion, there is one problem about review bra, and it's that his videos are too damn long. Yeah, he's often <laughs> often he takes ten words to say what could have been said in in two or one, and if and because of that, uh, it takes a lot of dedication to be a fan of his. And that's <laughs> why uh, that's why his fans are really big fans. Mm-hmm. Um, but in my opinion, if this guy learns how to be a little more like uh, concise and to summarize a little better uh, and to like talk. Like maybe a little bit faster with a little fewer words, he could go really far. Mm-hmm. I think if 
there's really two paths that your view back can go down to find success. I think if he continues to do what he does now, but expands it, makes it because most people who like review bra sort of listen to him like you listen to say uh, almost like a podcast where it's sort of like yeah. a background or something. You can't really sit down and look at the screen for twelve minutes while he talks about hypes up fast food for five minutes and then bites it for mm. one. I think if he did that and expanded upon that and started doing things like I think he would find continued success. But I think if he got a real editor that could like chop down his words and make his videos yes. that are currently like 15 minutes down to like maybe four at best, that would make him also popular. But it's two different paths, you know? Yeah. I don't know which one he'd take, but yeah, he'll find something. Mm, that is a, these are good points yes I, I agree with you whatever you're not whatever he doesn't do someone else can go ahead and just maybe refine the editing a little bit and go for that mm -hmm. you know I think yeah, part of the yeah, appeal yeah. of Review Raw is that it's all raw it's as raw as it gets you know and so the True. life of a man who eats fast food in a, a very nice suit you know yeah yeah, yeah. no yeah that, that's very true yeah and um, and he's probably one of the best examples that eating fast food all the time will not make you fat oh yeah because that lad <laughs> that lad is as skinny as it gets so uh, people will say yeah i'm fat but it's because fast food is more affordable and more convenient yeah you can eat fast food all the time and not become fat does he exercise or something or does he just like restrict i don't his think portions? so because he's a very skinny guy he doesn't yeah i don't think so it's kind of like um is well, it's, it's really low energy, uh, and it's it's part of uh, his charm. But it also, it's it's kind of obvious that this guy does not go to the gym, and I don't think he exercises. I would be surprised. He's not the type of uh, of people who uh, would imagine like exercising really. I've never seen him without uh, that suit on. But if he, I think he could mm -hmm. either be like sticks and stones, like completely skinny. Like you could tell, you can see his ribs from like across the room, kind of skinny. Mm -hmm. Or he mm -hmm. could just be completely like just toned out like the perfect the physical like peak male form underneath that suit <laughs> part of the award of that is that yeah. you'll never know the secret he could he could be the giga chad or he could be you know just a a, a walking skeleton you know maybe but i, I think <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you look at his wrists well we see his wrists often obviously oh yeah those uh, are i think he is I think it's skinny because yeah. his wrist looks really skinny. Well, you could have – well, you don't have to have like arm definition and like certain muscle definition, but you can do tons of cardio. You could be doing that. I think – Oh, yeah. But I'm pretty sure if I had to bet – if I had to put money on it, I'm sure he just doesn't eat all the fast food that he buys. I think he just taste tests it and then like just gives it away or something. Maybe. Yeah, and then he actually eats like a real meal at his house. Mm. You know? I bet he knows how yeah. to cook. yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, take some peas out of the can, just pour it in. Some dumb white bullshit, you know? <laughs> Unseasoned. Yeah. God. Yeah. Do you think he even knows what pepper is? I <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. yeah, but that's one of... Uh, that's a channel I really respect. I don't watch him a lot just because I'm a little bit more um, uh, ADHD than that. You know? I can't really... Yeah. Yeah, yeah same. But I yeah, appreciate yeah. it regardless. I, I kind of respect the crowd, and I hope that he gets um, a, tr a truly uh, flourishing career out of what he's doing now. Yeah, I remember for a while he had his show on YouTube, plus a podcast, plus a radio show. Uh, so uh, A radio show? Like... Yeah. Ooh, like one of those public assets, like college things, or did he like... He seems like the type that would get on NPR or some shit like that. Uh, no, no, it was uh, AM stuff. You had to tune in at a specific frequency to uh, to listen to him. You mm -hmm. couldn't even listen to it on the internet, although he would put the episodes on SoundCloud afterwards. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it was a it was a specific radio frequency thing that he had a, like an emitter at his house uh, to broadcast. Imagine you're a and trucker in like Boston and you're just like scrolling through the channels and you just come across review <laughs> Rob. I couldn't handle it. I would I would have a meltdown. I'd probably yeah. crash the truck. I, I think I would freak out that much. Jesus. Yeah, it was called VORW. 
What did he V-O-R- talk about? It was very stream of consciousness discussion, kind of like this show, but even more uh, stream of consciousness because it's just like he didn't have any guests. Or if it's just any- him, then yeah, it's got to be just him rambling about something. He, he, yeah, it was just him. There was a lot of music because he's a big fan of music. He definitely listens to rock. He, he's definitely he's definitely yeah. got more taste in music. Yeah, anyone yeah. who it, acts it, like I, that is definitely into some weird sort of like thrashy shit. Yeah, I remember the first time I listened to his podcast or was it his radio show? I'm not sure. He, he was playing uh, one of his favorite songs of the moment, which is Future Me Hates Me by The Beths. It's a really cool Australian rock band. Hmm, I never heard and, of it. Uh, I th- hmm. is, uh, it was a, it was one of the, the, the best albums of 2018, in my opinion. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The be- the Beths. The yep. Beths? Oh, yeah, like Elizabeth? Like Beth? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's the, like the, 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 the name. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. I, I, oh, I, I must apologize. They're not from Australia. They're from New Zealand. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, same thing. My bad. Uh, Big difference. Yeah, real. Like, no, listen, no offense, Giles, but, I mean, really? <laughs> how, how different can it be? No offense to anyone listening. Any Kiwis getting pissed off right now? <laughs> Have you seen my, this? My uh, name's, what? My name's pronounced Giles, by the way. Just oh, I said Giles it. 20 times. Sorry, Giles. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone has so far, pretty much. I've heard, I don't know. I've never, I've never met anyone with the proper name Giles. So is that mm. popular in Australia? Yeah. Because it's not here at all. I, bl- I blame my parents. I don't know what they were thinking. I, no, there's one place I've heard it before. It's, um, you know, the Crucible, you know, the Salem Witch Trials. One of the guys is named Giles. Oh, yeah. That's about it. Oh. And I only read about it, so. Was he one of the, was he one of the bad I think guys? he's one of the good guys. I'm pretty sure he, like, I think he oh, died okay. being oh, yeah. virtuous or something, if I think. I think he's the guy that got yeah, crushed he, by like, the rocks. dived in front of the nurse. Do you think? I don't know. Yep. Something like the only that. Other, the only other Giles I can think of is the one in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Never watched that show. Yeah, that's a big one. Well, it's a, it's a show about a teenage girl who f- fight vampires, and he, he has, mm. she has some kind of it's kind of a mentor or a guide, and he's called Giles. Yeah, he's mm. uh, one of the main characters of the show. Mm. I hear a lot about uh, that show. Yeah, he does me favors actually. <laughs> People seem to already like be predisposed to like yeah. like like me because <laughs> they like that character. Yeah, I don't think it's it's a pretty good name. It's just not popular. If you started spelling it with the J. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no way. Actually, that, that looks weird now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, continue with the G and just explain it yeah, every time someone it. just pronounces it. Yeah, well. yeah. Just like that, that very new meme of uh, guy who, um, guys who uh, say video game names, but they misspell a little bit, and it's funny. And I saw someone, like, say Mortal, Mortal Kombat, but with a C instead of a K, and it looks so, cur- <laughs> it looks so cursed. Oh, God. Unca- Uncanny Valley. Yeah. Very much, yeah. Yeah. You ever just spell like things like really wrong and just, just to see how far you can get? <laughs> I, I, I'm sure that must yeah. be a little bit difficult for you, uh, Mojito, because, cool. you know, in French, orthography is so different. But in English, every sound has like five other ways to like spell it. God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you yeah. can even add like three words to make us like the sound that a single letter would normally yeah. do. Right. So three, three letters to... To make it the same sound that a single letter would. English make. is such yeah. bullshit when it comes to reading and spelling. Like the fish, that is spelled G H O T I. Yeah, the, the goatee. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. know about that. What's another good one? I don't know. But most Americans don't know how to spell. That's a that's a little rumor. That's true, but it's only because English <laughs> is a really terrible language to try and learn to spell and write. Yeah. Well, like, a, like um. Oh, sorry. No, go on. Yeah, I know how to. I'm good. At, <laughs> I'm good at spelling only because it's the only language I have ever been exposed to, and it took me 18 years to get here. So, you know. Yeah. What were you gonna say, man? Yeah, there's just the pronunciation is just. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Um, the, the dr- uh, drive-throughs will often just say like T H R U. Yeah. Um, but that's and that's an example of a word that just like normally they use O U G H. Just to have that same thing that just the, the letter U does. Drive frog. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Or uh, all, all, all these things you see of yard sales, like written yard sard or stuff like this. That's funny. Um. <laughs> it's got a nice... One, one word 
I don't know why, but one word that really pissed me off is the word genuine. <laughs> Every time I look at this word, uh, yeah. I feel like it should be pronounced genuine, not genuine. Genuine. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. You can it's, say it's genuine, like, but you have to really, if you want to emphasize genuine, you can say genuine if you want. <laughs> it's like the it's like Herobrine from uh, Minecraft. Minecraft. Yeah. It, it it should be it should be said Herobrine. I, I I hate it. Yeah, I always pronounce it in my head wrong. Yeah. Don't worry if anyone who's trying to learn English listening to this. Don't worry, we don't really get it either. It's a struggle. <laughs> you know yeah. the word uh, Colonel. You ever spell that? Don't. It, it's not worth it. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Or like baloney. C O C C O L O. Uh, N-E-L. Yeah, that one's just that that one pisses me off. Um, I can't look at that yeah. without getting upset. Yeah, that's so weird. Yeah, it's I looked it up recently. It's because it just borrows directly the French word yep. for like like colonel or something like that. It borrows directly yep. from that and people just kept pronouncing it the way the uh, cognate, which is colonel. And mm-hmm. they just merged and it, it pisses me off. I it shouldn't be allowed. I mean, don't I get mean, me wrong, French words are also spelt weird. But like, at, oh, yeah. at least in French, everything like there's only like there's a couple different ways to spell some words, but like there's no two different like forms of letters can't be spelt like differently. So you probably can read a weird word fine, you know. That's what I've heard. Well, yeah, and um, often the way the world is the way the word is spelt it shows its origin, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, same with English, like for example. Yeah, so for for example, a lot of words that have a, a circumflex accent on the on the, on a letter, it's because it came from the old French and had an S, and then uh, the S was removed when the the, the, the word moved to modern French. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it shows and it helps uh, on how to pronounce it. There's not a lot of words that are completely pronounced seemingly out of nowhere and out of the blue there's a lot of rules and some of them are a bit complicated and obscure but there's always a rule in French mm-hmm. and it, I feel like in English it's just like uh, yeah it's just it's pronounced like that there's plenty like, of rules you... in English and some of them are pretty oh, yeah, complex like... but there's plenty of exceptions that you just have to know on an individual basis there's yeah. so many exceptions so many like fucking Worcestershire sauce oh my gosh <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. I can't. I can't pronounce it right. I will never spell that word correctly. Same. Oh, and you know W O R C E S. Okay. T E R S H I R. Okay. Apply for Mensa because that was insane. If you got that right. <laughs> yeah. Um. And there's a couple. Plenty of the words are spelled stupid because of just the language they're borrowed from. A lot. Of, you know, hors d'oeuvres. That English word, we, the spelling is the exact same as it is in French. So it's like, it yeah. looks like horse divorce. And I can't. Horse <laughs> divorce. Yeah, and like, yeah, mo- yeah. like most of the letters are silent. So, you know, fuck you guys for that, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'll wow. never forgive you're you. The one, you're the one who stole it. So uh, Yeah, we, I, I guilty as charged. We did steal like half of our vocabulary from you guys, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the French language is a mix of Latin, Greek, and Germanic. Mm-hmm. The Gaulish uh, some... like languages that existed before the Romans came in, right? Yeah, the Gaul- the Gallic was like actually kind of the uh, the minority, and the the majority language uh, was Franc. Uh, that it gave its name to the country, and that was a Germanic language. But it's it's a Germanic language that that it had traveled through Latin and and Celt or Celt. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's and, I uh, think it's both actually. It depends. And yeah, and there's uh, yeah, there's also a lot of uh, small dialects that uh, intersected more or less uh, inside the, the the language. So it's really the the French language is really a mix. It's really a how do you say um, a melting pot of uh, of pretty much every culture in Europe. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that's already uh, it's already complex thing. and it, it's already got so many components itself. And then if, if French makes up like half of English, so that mm, yeah. that makes it ever more complicated. That's why spelling is so complicated. There's really two different spelling systems: the ones for words that originate from French or Latin or Latin words that come from French and stuff, and then there's rules for like German words, and they're completely yeah. different. And then there's like Greek origin words, and then there's everything else. Yeah, it, it's mm-hmm. a it's a big big fat mess. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. So if if anyone here struggles to read English, um, don't beat yourself up too much. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't be yeah. afraid to pronounce a word wrong. We're pretty tolerant of it. What's something that I that I have struggled with for a really long time and I still struggle with now? It's like these small expressions that mean a different thing, but not really different, and that really look like each other. Uh, like for example, how much and how many? I have struggled with that forever, really? like for 20 years or more. And uh, every time when I'm speaking, I have to stop for a couple seconds to, because I remember the rule, but it never became part of the fluent language for me. I know the difference between how much and how many, but only if I think about it for a few seconds. Really? I can just... Yeah, I cannot just insert it in a conversation without having to think about it. Because, yeah, because in French it's the same word. It oh, should be the, okay. I, I don't know. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard for me to uh, to just insert it in a conversation without... Uh, if I don't think about it, I will probably uh, use the wrong one. Something also in on the internet that I struggle with for 20 years, sign up and sign in. I have to really think hard about it to figure out which is which. Really? Well, sign in yeah. is returning... And then sign up is uh, joining for the first time, right? That's, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. But that's gotta be. Yeah, yeah. Is it the same word in French? Because that one, that no, one, that one, I understand fine. But now that I think about it, how much and how many, I can't really explain the difference. But I, I mean, I never struggle with it. But I, I, I don't know what. what how do you explain the difference between those two words? Well, uh, how much is uh, for something that cannot be numbered and how many is for something that can be numbered like in a, a, a it's a different numbering and um, huh that's so interesting i've never even thought of that and yeah how much is like if it's there's a quantity of a thing like a, a half a liter of water uh but like how many is like if there's uh, how many people are coming to the party uh oh, 10 you know so you cannot say uh that uh wow I, I think one you can replace by some, uh, and the other you can. I mean, I, but yeah, it's it's a confusing uh, dichotomy. Wow. The, the how much and how many has always been uh, different. I'm sure you could probably screw that up, and you usually won't confuse a person. But wow. Maybe that is that is a difficult concept to understand. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, and it's like a, it's a it's a it's a different it's a difficult concept to uh, just be comfortable with. Like I know a few people who don't know uh, right and left. Like they really have to think about it. I am like, one of those oh, people. No. I whenever you whenever a person whenever I'm driving and someone is giving me directions like through like by just talking to me about yeah. it. Whenever they say yeah. right or left, it's a real coin flip if I actually like pick the right direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom is exactly the same, so I'm very uh, familiar with that with that issue. It's very and, uh, embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. I get I get picked on all the time from my family. <laughs> uh, and yeah, there's you you have to think. Oh yeah, the left is the hand that doesn't write, or you know, I I know and I I know people have like these techniques. And uh, for me, how much and how many is the same? I really have to think hard about it. Mm. In French, how much and how many is the same word? But uh, sign up and sign in is completely different words. So. Oh, okay. So I don't. I don't think yeah, that's. I have, I have friends. I have friends who can't differentiate how much and how many. Like. Uh, yeah. Fr friends from. Uh, people. Like, is English their native language? Yeah, yeah. Like people from who went to the same school as me. Oh, that, they're that, just like. That's comforting. Yeah. Sorry that I can't say the same. I've never met anyone who screwed that up in my. I think. I don't know, but uh, I mean, are you sure that native was like definitely their native language? Because I don't know, because uh, mm. I I don't know. I've just never heard of that struggle before. This is the first I'm hearing about it, but I get it. Um, so so like an example, he said today he um he's playing Valorant or Valorant or whatever, um, and he said I've been missing, uh, uh I've been messing up so much of my shots like i've been missing so much of my shots well, that kind of mm -hmm. that's um, that's sort of okay and it's, it's many in that context. it would be but you can say how much and it doesn't i didn't really notice that that was wrong when you said it right there but yeah grammatically yeah they it's not considered correct but you you know what they're saying so you sort of don't yeah but if you're asking yeah, for like the price of something much. at a store and you're like how many is that 
Like that's a little weird. That would get me. Yeah. Like that. That's noticeable. Mm. How much dollars is that? Yeah. I'm- like people <laughs> fucked that up as well. Yeah. I think that if someone was talking to me and made the mistake, I would not notice it. There's a lot of mistakes that I really notice, uh, but that's one I would not. I bet I wouldn't notice. I, I notice it a lot for some reason. I'm going to notice it now. So, Jeez, why. now I'm turned on to the idea. <laughs> Boys, every good thing has an end, and we have been uh, recording for almost three hours. Whew. So... That's, um, I try as a rule to have three hours at the maximum for any episode. That's already pretty long, just like the videos of our friend Review Bra, the report of the week. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> we, we're gonna have to, uh, wrap up That's pretty all right. soon. This has been absolutely fantastic. I've really enjoyed this. I'd love to come it back. It was really and, nice, yes. Yeah, I'd love to come back uh, another day if you guys are available, if you guys need an extra person. I can bring some of the people from, the msec chat and then they can give uh-huh. their testimonials about specific things you know oh you know what uh i've uh there's been an experiment that i did on episode 10 if you want to listen to it it's like a game where i um make people um i i tell some fake facts and some real facts and the contestants have to uh figure out which is fake which is real uh it was kind of fun i'm not explaining it very well but no i get uh, it i know what you're talking about right now so um so i have been meaning to uh make this uh come back and uh I, there's a bunch of people who have been on the podcast who say that they wanted to come back so uh I, i'm i'm thinking of like making them come back in uh the game uh episode form mm-hmm. so uh yeah i'm down for if that you're, if you yeah if you're interested yeah, message that me whenever be... you're going to organize that, because I'll absolutely come back for that. Great. Yeah, this has been I will. fantastic, and I can't wait for that to happen. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep nice. in touch when that, uh, with that and stuff. Nice. All right. Cool. It's been great uh, meeting you guys and having this great conversation with you about yeah, it was really whatever. Cool, man. Yeah, it's been really nice. All right, it's been great talking to you guys. Uh, I'll keep in touch, okay? Same. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I'll, I'll give you my email address. Oh, no, you already have it. Yeah, yeah, I already have your email. email. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the um, do you have like a word for the end? Want to talk about something special? Plug maybe one of your stuff? Um. Yeah, uh, I have a couple of different things. I have a SoundCloud. I got a YouTube channel and a Twitch stream. I'm going to be trying and doing Twitch streams every other day uh, whenever I can. But my schedule is getting a little busier because it's the summer. I have mm-hmm. a couple of jobs now. But regardless, I still have, I frequently upload on my SoundCloud. I'm going to go and start do uh, YouTube and Twitch. And I still have that blog on Tumblr, of course. If you don't already know what that is, um, I got Mm. links for that. Those are all things you can check out if you are interested. Yeah. Be great help. I will put all the links in the the description of the episode, of course. All right. Perfect. Thank you, guys. It's been a complete pleasure. Have a good night, you two. Okay. It was really uh, reciprocate uh, shit. It was really the same for me. Uh, I, I really <laughs> you enjoyed reciprocate the exact same feelings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, well, the word of the end, as usual, life is short. Eat dessert first. Life is short. Eat dessert first. <laughs> life is See short. Ya. Eat dessert first. Adios. <laughs>